Ah, greetings, Commanders! Welcome to Crash Landing. Ah, it's been a long week, and as usual, we have Commander Alien. Hi, Alien! Hello! But as some of you who follow me on Twitter will know, we've also got another Commander in the Cobra tonight. Say hi! Oh, yeah, good, uh, good evening. Hello, <laughs> there he is! It's Commander Psycho Cow. How are you doing? I'm very well, yeah. Thank you very much for having me on. How is yourself? Ah, uh, pretty good. Tired, long week. Glad to be back on Elite. Ah, dear, dear, dear. So, another week and still no Alpha 4. Oh, I know, I know. Soon, soon. We have had a second newsletter, though, which we just saw as we were about to come online. That is, uh, as we were just saying, it's kind of odd to see an another one so soon after 19. But yes, we do have uh, newsletter number 20 now. And I yeah, quite a, yeah, it's quite a detailed one as well. It's got lots, lots and lots in it. I don't know, you've, you've read through it, haven't you, Alien, already? Because I've literally just skimmed it just as I was coming online. <laughs> I had a bit of a read through it, yeah. <sighs> so yeah, they, they've got some sort of um, simulator for trading. Sim a, a program for simulating yeah. trading thousands and thousands of times. Yeah, I heard it was a cybernetic implant from Michael Brooks so that you can keep <laughs> track of everything day and night. Well, yeah, you've, you've, you've got to keep tabs on these things, haven't you? You've got to know whether you're, uh, it's worth selling your Lavian brandy right there. See, I always thought they got the interns to do the trading runs over and over and over again, 24-7. <laughs> Just keep trying. While I to go home. <laughs> Everyone else goes home for the Easter weekend, but the interns have to stay there and keep, keep testing, the trading keep runs. Testing. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. what I thought, but no, apparently they've got some program that does it. <laughs> yeah, it's quite, it, it does seem quite smart. I'll tell you what else, it, it kind of suggests that for them to create some kind of API so that it could run with um, a, you know, or maybe an iPhone app or something, really could open up you know, that third part of the game and let people do their own stock management and mm. it could be quite, well obviously not spreadsheet management, but be able to go, right, I'm going to go there and take advantage of that nice dip in price and buy <laughs> some of that. And yeah. yeah. But then the danger you've got with that is people who don't do that, they're then at advantage. They're just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that, that is the problem, isn't it? But I mean, there was things like that for um, was it World of Warcraft? I mean, there wasn't really an API to begin with, but the uh, uh, the websites started popping up, t you know, taking advantage of you know, gather that information and get the stock prices and stuff. And yeah, you could play WoW with you know going into the auction house and just selling things willy nilly. But you had the advantage if you uh, found this website and you know started getting the best prices. So. And there are going to be people out there uh, yeah. that are going to collate the good prices, and there'll be a hot, you know, hot stock website that you can <laughs> go to to see where, where the good milk run is at the current time. And um, that's only natural. But I think you know the the ability to have your your tablet, your your Kindle, your whatever, with a e page open that shows the prices of the system you're in um, as a sort of third display screen would be quite awesome. Same for sort of plotting your course, that'd be a really yeah. amazing thing to have. I don't know it's not something they've got planned, but... No. No, I mean it, it would be really cool though if you could poke in and do that. I mean it is something that a lot of companies consider these days, they open up APIs to uh, some of their products and uh, you know, being this like a, an online consistent, you know, universe that's uh, constantly changing and adjusting, then uh, yeah, it might be a reasonable thing for them to consider. Trisk is saying the courier looks amazing. Can't wait to see it in game. Is there pictures of the courier? Um, not in this newsletter, but I have seen it before. Um, I can't remember where I've seen it. There is there is something on the forum for it. Um, yeah, I have seen some shots of it. Now, they, I, a lot of people were kind of divided on it. You know, it was, uh, a lot of people saying, "Oh yes, it's awesome. Yeah, really nice take on the original design." And then some people saying it was too different from the original design. So it's, I was uh, one of the ones saying too different. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, it, you know, I think it's divided a lot of people on there. But then uh, you always carry on. You could always just ask, just just ask blackly. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he could change it for you. <laughs> I just I relish the day that we all log into multiplayer and there's a zone towards a planet <laughs> being commanded by Blakely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gonna hack everything in there at one point or another. I saw uh, the latest thing. It wasn't um, wasn't Commander Blackley actually. It was. Um 
Oh, I forget his name now. He, uh, he's going to hate me for this. I, I know his real name, but I can't remember his commander name. But he's managed to... Uh, he, he put a Twitch thing up on it, travelling at ludicrous speed. Have you seen that? No. no. <laughs> he's managed to he's managed to hack the top speed cap on uh, on one of the, uh, uh, That's the ships. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's he's hacked the pips so you can put your shields up to ten pips. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was fantastic. So, the uh, it was it was crazy because the the camera was doing that kind of like leaning back in your chair sort of thing, but it was doing it at such a a high magnitude. It was like warped right through the back of his skull and into the cargo hold sort of thing. It was just really really surreal. But uh, yeah, it's fantastic. He's flying around. Sounds between like us. the boost in X Beyond the Frontier, the first in the X series, <laughs> where you, you hit the tab for the boost, and if you held it down long enough, you just mm. had this whacking great long cockpit in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's fantastic. But it's uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of people have been asking me if I've been doing things like that. I I I know of ways of changing things in memory, but no, I haven't specifically gone in and changed anything because I don't see the point. You know, it's I'm not cheating anyone other than myself. So what's the point? Well, it's, yeah. Go on. Somebody, somebody does it because it gives that information of, right, this is too easy to get into and to, to find the values and, and although it being an alpha and far from a final build, yeah, it's, it's good to know the tools that people will use and the tool that they're using, it really kind of makes it so ridiculously easy yeah. to get to, you know, to do these things and that's maybe a little bit of a concern going forward but we're far from a final you know, version yet so... Yeah, Just absolutely. Yeah, it's it it will change. I guarantee that they they will get around to uh, changing that. I mean, kind of the, the things you can do to obfuscate away things in in a in a program. It's something you can just layer on after you've done a build. Um, you know, I, I mean, I've used tools where you, you know you compile the whole thing up together, and then uh, after you've built the XE, you actually run the tool. Uh, after the uh, the program has been written to the disk, and you can go and uh, obfuscate away a lot of data, make it really hard to kind of break into and steal things. Um, so yeah, it, it kind of it makes no sense to do it until you've got the final version of the XE that you care about. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's the same as the information and in the logs. You kind of need that information easy at the moment until you've kind of resolved the issues. Yeah. So why why make it difficult? I mean, you are working with a small group of people that you would expect not to have paid the premium and then acted uh, counterintuitive to the progress of the game. That would just wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it a is. Bit, bit of trust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the the only people you know who can see these values at the moment are the people that bump into each other in alpha anyway. So <laughs> it's we it's have not a big. comment. Oh, cool. we have a comment. Psycho Cow, I'm with you. People need to be right bastards during the Alpha and Beta, including blockaders on Zelada and whatnot. That's from <laughs> Bewilder Beast. <laughs> yes, you've got to stress test these things. That's what it's all about. I tell you what, it's really, really, really difficult when you're in the Cobra to be a pain in the arse in the dock. I tried, as of watching some commander lining up beautifully at the port, mm. to come flying in behind him and knock him out of his position. <laughs> but, in the Cobra, it's very unforgiving because you mm. tend to overshoot. Yes, yeah, it's kind of, once it's got that momentum behind it, it's really difficult to stop. What are you flying tonight then, Karash? I'm I'm in my lovely Cobra Mark III. I loves it. I loves it. I do. I actually did manage to get a few hours in on the weekend and saved up enough cash to kit this out. So I got the uh, I got the mil spec uh, hull plating now, which is fantastic. Gives me a little extra cover whilst I'm getting shot at like I am now. And uh, I've kitted her out with uh, four beam lasers. Gotta love them. Fantastic. Does some serious damage. I've just had a question pop into my head. Oh, yeah, sure. When we get closer towards, like, a, a proper release, mm -hmm. we're going to get, we're going to get game wipes along the way, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Well, but when we get closer to a proper release, mm -hmm. I wonder if, when you've spent X hours playing it, and you've got your fancy ship and you, all your fancy equipment, and you've got a ton of credits and they do a game wipe. I wonder if Frontier are going to give you back 
what you had before the game wipe. No. I think what you'll find is that, well, I know certainly through the alpha and beta stages they will wipe like any point whatsoever and we can all go jump. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but but once, also, it hit, once it hits gamma they really don't want to do wipes, they want mm. to kind of reserve them for, oh dear we didn't think about that one through. Uh, <laughs> Bloody Yan and his uh, 80 gazillion credits uh, just <laughs> making a mockery of it. But I think that the benefit of not having wipes through Gamma is that you then create a universe of tiers. Uh, you don't have everyone starting off right at that same point, fighting the same course, grabbing the same cargo and trying to get ahead of other people doing the same. So it kind of creates that fleshed out world so that a new player comes in and yeah, sure, he meets, you know, Karash and his massive Cobra and is, is, is probably <laughs> dismissed out of hand but it creates that feeling of, okay, I'm the, I'm, I'm the bottom at the moment but I can see there's loads of people that I can catch up with and, mm. you know, we can catch up with them and then I can maybe overtake them. So you're going to have that feeling in a world that's evolving as opposed to, oh look, we're all Flying around in our sidewinders. Mm. I suppose it's uh, yeah. I suppose if, if 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 you take you know previous games for for reference, things like WoW and all, they've done their utmost to kind of preserve uh, gameplay state across builds. Um, and it's only in like the uh, the beta versions and whatnot where they actually wipe stats on it. So I think Frontier probably be in it'd be in their best interest to try their best to maintain stats across the different builds once we get to that certain point. Um, I don't know whether it's always going to be possible. I know it's, it's infinite... Well, it, it's notoriously bad to try and update a piece of software and not break like a data file that was created with one version and then move on to the next without causing problems. So I, I'm, I'm confident they'll be able to do it, but uh, it, it won't be uh, easy. <laughs> Okay, a question from Bewilder Beast. Okay. Karash, so what's the weakness with your loadout? When do gimbals not lock on? Stealth, agility, is there any rock, paper, scissors element to the current balance? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, yeah, stealth is not so good, obviously, because I've got nothing but beam lasers. So um, I've got no real stealth ability on this at the moment. Um, agility isn't yeah, it's not too bad, but I have found that the the secondary gimbaled uh, beam lasers on on the out, outer hard points they don't actually lock on as quickly as the main ones. Um, I don't know if it's because they're they're one class below the main ones, but they just don't. So they kind of you end up with two crosshairs kind of fighting for the center position, which makes it a little confusing. That's the whoops, not concentrating now. Oops, oops, oops. Ow, ow, ow. There's a ceiling there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the only real problem with that. I haven't um, really come across a loadout which is particularly good or bad against this, to be fair. This is pretty deadly, really, with four beam lasers. It is. I know, I've used four beam lasers myself, and I've tried it with, um, you know, trying to use hard points, uh, non-gimbled, Mm. For your 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 lesser one to try and keep the level of the weapon high, and it just really becomes quite tricky. Gimbled mm. or non-gimbled, you know, you, you don't want to try and mix them because it changes the way. It's like quite counterintuitive. Yeah. However, what what really disappointed me, and it's not, I mean, when I say disappointed, it was just one of these things. I thought, oh, that's a shame, mm. is that if you soup your sidewinder up mm -hmm. to you know military grade, give it some good weapons. You're still no match for a basic Cobra. Yeah, there's no real kind of in-between ships at the moment. I'm, I'm sure we're going to see those coming in in the next couple of versions. But uh, yeah, at the moment it's a big jump between the Sidewinder and the Cobra. I think we've all got ourselves to blame for that, really, because we've all been chanting Cobra since the very, <laughs> very end of the Kickstarter. <laughs> we want to see the Cobra, and uh, yeah, so I think if we've only got ourselves to blame for that, really, haven't we? <laughs> I'm hoping they bring out the nice little um, passenger cruiser next so that I can mm. do some tours around the universe. And yeah, I... I on. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, on my right you can see Commander Yan incoming. Please uh, <laughs> stick your heads between your knees <laughs> and pray. <laughs> Kiss it goodbye. <laughs> Ah, oh dear. Yes, no, I, I, I would like to see a completely new ship next. That would be nice, actually, because, you know, we've seen the, we've seen a couple of the classic ones remade, and we were, uh, we're seeing lots of uh, concept arts and shots of uh, the in-progress of, of the uh, other ships. But, yeah, I would like to see one of the completely new ship designs and see uh, how they look, how they compare. 
So it sounds like you're of the mindset that the premium beta is going to be a bit part of the game and, and you know, we're going to continue to have sort of bits yeah. and limitations rather than it being what we would what, what you would expect from a beta, which is basically a full game but unbug tested. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's um kind of the the difference between this and what I've seen in other betas is that they do seem to be going for that kind of we're just going to piecemeal it together and then you know you, you guys behind these guys can have the one that they had last and kind of you know like notch it on piece by piece I think that, that that's the the thing they're going for by the looks of it so uh, yeah it is a a different way of doing it I must admit but uh, no, it's probably probably for the best really you can kind of incrementally introduce it to introduce each section to a larger group of people and fix it as it goes along basically. Tequil says, I see in the newsletter they mentioned five systems to travel between in Alpha 4. Ooh. Yes, I did uh, I did briefly flick down it like I said, but uh, yeah, I mean that that kind of confirms my suspicion when we were talking about uh, a 200 light year volume or something uh, they, they, they mentioned for the for the next version. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of I sat and worked it out, and I thought you know, like given given the density of stars in the local neighbourhood of the Sol system, sort of thing, it's like you probably would only get a handful of stars. That's more than I thought, actually. I thought what they probably do is, even though it was that size volume, we'd probably just have the the Zalada system and the Iota Cruxis system, and you could jump between the two. Uh, I thought that's what we might get, which uh, uh, I thought yeah, that'd be the minimum they could probably get away with putting on there. But no, I'm. Uh, Actually, uh, please, there's going to be a bit more in it than uh, what I initially thought. Oh, that's embarrassing. Something just beeped at me. Oh, where am I? I am not where I thought I was. Oh! Oh, I think I will try this live on the air. This this happened to me last night, so I recorded it. I, I don't know if you saw my YouTube video I put up uh, yesterday. I um, managed to jump into, I think it was Free For All, and noticed that the uh, contested space scenario was only a handful of kilometers away. So I decided to fly between the, t the two instances. And here we go again, 100 kilometers away, so might as well do it live on the air just to show that these instances are actually seamless and hosted in the same space. Is this going to take the 11 minutes that your video was? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm, I'm going I'm to spam the boost key all the way. We'll, we'll get there quick. It's no problem. 94 kilometers. It is ticking down quickly. There you go. 93. <laughs> but I, in that in that video, 11 minutes, I did fly fly there and back and took a ship out in each scenario to prove that it was actually a seamless scenario. So. <laughs> That's interesting. When I mean, could you went from what was it contested space to free for all? Yes. Yeah. I uh, I just uh, fired it back up. Then I'm I was in. Uh, in the contested space scenario, and what you'll notice is as I get about halfway between the two of them, uh, I'll actually get five locations show up on the uh, the left-hand navigation pane, because I'm I'm not actually technically near the beacon on on any one particular instance. I'm kind of like in in between, you know what I mean? The points of interest. So that does prove that the uh, the whole um, travel system that they, they mentioned about is up and operational and they do actually have a fully consistent simulation in between these scenarios which is awesome. Yeah, this is exactly what we're looking for. I'm just yeah. curious because your option on picking a faction. Oh yes, um, at the moment. Does that dis disappear when you're nowhere near it and then appear when you're in the right nav area? Yes, it kind of does. Yeah, so at the moment it is on there. I can choose a faction. Um, I'll leave it on that menu there for a sec. Um, oh, there we go. So I'll just switch back over to navigate. You'll see this in a second, Kev. Um, the all five locations have now popped up on my galaxy map because I'm about 30% between one and the other. Um, and I, c I can still choose a faction, but I think when I get close to free for all, it will uh, it will block it again. So yeah, so it just just goes to show that these like scenarios are just com you know completely seamless, and the the rules that we're seeing at the moment literally are just based on your proximity to these nav beacons. That's the only uh, distinguishing factor. It's a scary thing to think that we could have had nav points all over the place and not had the ability to do this kind of flight. Yeah, that's uh, that is the worrying thing, isn't it? Is you know it, it, the initial design wasn't 
why it is ambitious is what it's turned out to be now. I'm 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 glad it's changed. <laughs> that's the that's the win for the community, I think, definitely. And I, I think I mean all the guys at Frontier they they've expressed how much more happy they are with the 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 model that they've come up with now. Oh yeah, it's a definite it's a definite winner. It really is. Where are we now? So we're 40 kilometres out at the moment. It doesn't take long between you get to it. I mean, it's not like it's multiple AU. No. <laughs> not back to the days of uh, FE2 and having to uh, uh, put your uh, Star Dreamer on. and Yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad. 38 kilometres. We're, we're getting there. It's not going to take long. I think Alien might have fallen asleep. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm still here. I've lost the Twitch chat. Oh, the Twitch chat's just come back oh. up. Ah, I, was, I was just about to say, because I was going to say, you know, there's a couple of questions that have come up there. Oh. Um, read, read them out, Kyle, please. I is certainly will. We, uh, we have one from, where did they go? Pitrisk, judging by sneak... No, 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 no. That's just a statement about having uh, the simulator, a trade simulator shows that we will have Eagle, Anacondas and Lacon Type 9 heavy as ships as additions to the game. Ooh. That'll be interesting. Um, it's Tachil, 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 Karash, Tachil, I see point defence is loaded. Do you find that they grab you a lot of bad attention? <laughs> uh, yes, if I had forgot that I've got them assigned, yes, they do kind of uh, occasionally uh, catch me out and start shooting at a target, and yes, yeah, they do cause a bit of a pain. Um, I tend to try and associate them with the... Um, with another fire group actually, which I haven't done on this, because for some reason the fire groups just kind of s occasionally they could disappear. I think it's when the game crashes, the fire groups just reset, and I'm just lazy and I can can't be bothered to set them right. But yeah, I tried to set them on a secondary fire group so they don't uh, they don't fire unless I specifically want them to fire on target. Little pains. Oh, I can see a ship has come into view. Oh, we've got uh, another question from Bewilder Beast. Um, is it ever possible? I can actually answer this one as well. Is it ever possible for someone who's been surprised, attacked, to recover and win, or is the best tactic to run and jump? <laughs> well, I, I'll, I'll answer this first if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Find that the only way you're going to survive and give yourself a chance is to spin, face that person, and blast past them. Yeah. Uh, heading at them in order to get onto their six, and it is possible. Mm. Yeah, it's very much... A, it, it It does kind of hark back a bit to the way that you could do it in FE2. It literally is like uh, you, you just kind of joust past them in a way, don't you? Just like speed past them and then like hope that uh, uh, you can get on their six quicker than they can sort of thing. That's, that's practically your only defence, really. Yeah, the, the only defence you've got is attack. I think that might, might be addressed because I think we know they've kind of stated way back originally that they wanted combat to be a long drawn out affair and it's mm. not what we've got so there must be some kind of uh, adjustments and alterations to come yeah yeah i would think so i mean uh, there's definitely tweaks can be made along the way i mean this uh, i mean I'm, david wasn't really concerned about things like the um uh, the starports for example people were talking about the, you know people were griefing around the starports you know i mean uh, when I met him, he, he was quite happy to say, like, yeah, we can make the defences on the space stations as tough as we want. <laughs> you know? So it's like, if you find that people start being a right arse, it's like, yeah, we can just tweak this number and tweak that number. It, it'd be really simple change for them to do, and uh, effectively completely rebalance the game in favour of people who are having trouble. I have to say, I, I love the the sort of time that you you lose when your shields go down to getting them back up and you're sitting there flying and doing your evasive maneuvers. Dodging, come on, dodging, shields, dodging, come on. dodging, dodging, come on, come on, come on, come on, and they go, bloop, shields online, and you go, right, you bugger, I'm going to have you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, oh, it's brilliant. It is, it is really enjoyable experience. I mean, uh, like I've said many times before, I, I never really enjoyed combat that much in the earlier versions of the game, um, mainly because I didn't really understand it and I was crap at it. To be fair, uh, so I didn't enjoy it much. But I have really, really enjoyed the combat in the versions we've seen so far. And to think, all my favourite parts of the game are yet to come—the exploration and the trading and all that stuff—and oh, I can't wait for all that. It's going to be so much fun. Ooh, here we go, getting up close, meters away from the target now. 
I'm wondering I if should. I sh I should hyperspace the last hundred meters. <laughs> <laughs> Just to take no, the that mic. would be a waste of fuel. That would be taking the mic when it one ton to jump a hundred meters. There we go. Why not? I will. Why not? I've got. Oh no, I can't. No, no, don't. <laughs> I can't yes. because it's dropped off the uh, the navigation panel, so I can't actually. I've got it locked still, but I can't pick it as a a target and jump. It would be irresponsible, and it frankly would boost your carbon footprint beyond any acceptable <laughs> level. <laughs> it's like a nuke to swat a fly. <laughs> <laughs> you would get a green party f bounty put on your head. <laughs> oh dear. I'm so just seeing Simon Winnard is uh, threatening to try and steal nav points and then put them somewhere else. <laughs> that would be really annoying, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, let's just go to the whoa, where am I? <laughs> And there we go, 100 kilometers in the other direction. So there we go, proved it. A consistent, seamless universe. How awesome is that? Yay! Oh, it's amazing, it really is. It's just, it just look, you know, it's going to be interesting when you find yourself dropping out of hyperspace for whatever reason, or maybe, uh, you know, deliberately dropping out so that anyone following you finishes up at the destination and then you take your time. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, there's so many interesting tactics that are going to come out of that. I mean, I still want to see this, because they spoke about the, uh, um, like, the kind of, was it like a, like a, like a net, like a, some sort of, like, field that you could put up to pull people out of hyperspace, and uh, uh, the, uh, my brain's escaping me. The cruise, right, the cruise. Super cruise. Yeah, super cruise, that's it, that's the one. Yeah, they talk about that uh, kind of, uh, some sort of mechanism where you can put a, a field in to pull people out of that. Uh, I, I can't wait to see that, how that's going to work, how that's going to be uh, used gameplay-wise. Loading, loading, loading. You just made me remember Blues Brothers then. <laughs> No, no copyrighted materials. No, we can't have any copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've had so many issues with that. I think I, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I think Google have started to listen, and they are changing some of their policies on the way that uh, YouTube works, and they're taking out the forced integration for G Plus for a start, which is a, a win. Uh, but uh, yeah, what what on earth they're going to do with this content ID system? I don't know. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I can't believe you have problems, and I have none. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly I wasn't expecting it at all. I literally got a message one day and I thought, what the heck's that? And checked it out and I got this kind of not nasty sounding thing, but this kind of like stern sounding thing about it. And kind of went and checked it out and it literally was because of uh, I think it was you know the Blue Danube or something like that, which is like seriously you've picked that up. I was like, how can you? Oh, it's just what can you do? And that's you can't argue with Google, can you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could. You just have to Google it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How to argue with Google? Commander Alexander mentions Michael's new T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I've seen that. Soon, swiftly, briefly, <laughs> post haste. <laughs> How did he get Michael's T-shirt size? That's what I'd like to know. I don't think we did. Uh, that was the problem. So it was uh, I can't remember who was it? So some people in the Elite Dangerous chat room were discussing it, and um, I'm not entirely sure that they did. I think they just went for, I think it was either a, a large or an XL. Ah, oh dear. It is a fun t shirt, though, I must admit. Oh, no. It's actually one of the cleaner ones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Whoop. Ah, I just lived up to my name. I, I thought it was ironic at the last LaveCon uh, Psycho Cow where we all got together for the group photo and you pull your top a, a, apart to show your uh, Chewbacca Chewbacca t-shirt <laughs> and who blocks your t-shirt picture? Only Michael Brooks himself. <laughs> I was I was hoping to try and get you know the T-shirt part and have him with his actual head right in the right location for it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! So either of you two caught up with the whole um, flight mechanics thread this week? Oh, which one is this? Is this uh, is this the I argument about flight assist being broken or something? Yes. Oh. Uh, 
I I've skimmed it, but <laughs> I I yeah I I, I kind of see these things pop up and I think I, I swear we've spoke about this before. <laughs> I think yeah, actually I've got a you know, firm recollection these things have been discussed in length. <laughs> There's, there's not a problem with anyone that's new to the forum coming in and asking an old question at all. Yeah. It's not, it wasn't. I don't think anybody had any problem with the question or the suggestions at all. Mm. It was merely the, the issues arose when the dev gave an answer and it was promptly ignored and then the dev was told that he's wrong. <laughs> it's like, oh. well, hold on a minute. We made this decision for this reason. And, mm. oh, no, that's wrong. No, 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 no. That's the reason why we made that decision. <laughs> uh, we're not going to revisit it. We've done it now. Thank you very much. But it's yeah. wrong. Yeah. No, no, you've got to listen. Yeah. Poor Mike. I mean, I think he's uh, I think he's going for some kind of award for the keeping his temper the, the longest. Yes, yeah, he did have uh, a patience of a saint, I think, to deal with that. Oh dear, no, you just, it's like I've said from the beginning, it's like you're never going to keep everyone happy, so you know, no. just kind of go go with the majority, that's all you can really do. Hope for the best. I think it's a case of if you tweak one thing to please people who are kicking up a fuss about it, you'll then have another group of people kicking up a fuss because you've tweaked it. Mm-hmm. Oh no, you can never win. It's the thing. It's just you have to go with the, you know, you have to go with what you feel is right. And I have to say, so far, I've I thoroughly enjoy jumping into the cockpit, having a wee fly around, and taking out some NPCs, maybe bump a couple of players into the port. That's always fun. And just, you know, it's just good fun. It really is. And I can only imagine that when they open this world up, and suddenly we've got all these new places to go. It's just gonna blow your mind, you know. You're not gonna, you're gonna kind of sit at your computer staring again, just like the first time we saw the asteroid fields. <laughs> just sit there going, "Wow, what, what, what do I do in this again?" <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. No, it's fantastic. I must admit, this person is really, really cross with me right now. Oh, oh. Oh, it's blew it up. There we go. Sorry, I just I, I <laughs> concentration then kicking in. Some sidewinder, I don't know who it was, was uh, pirating, and he they dropped some precious metals. I thought oh, I'll go in. I'll swoop for that. And he's not a happy chappy now because I just uh, I just swooped in and tried to grab it from under him. <laughs> That's definitely a hashtag cargo block. <laughs> Sorry. Amanda Snowman has a question, probably for you, Karash. Oh. Uh, about the t-shirts you received from the BAFTAs, are they Ooh. the same ones that will come in a box with the game, and how good is the quality? Um, I honestly can't answer the first question, because I truly don't know what their plans are. Um, I hope they, they are the ones that come, actually, because they are very, very nice. Um, they are very good quality actually, the, the print on it is, is very good. It's not like some of these ones you see where they're just kind of like a like a panel of colour that's just printed on, you know what I mean? Yeah. They are actually very nice, uh, nicely printed. I should, see, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing it right now, and see, mine is, mine is special because I've got this on the back, you'll see it shortly. I've got that, I've got that there, which is nice. Um, I, I haven't seen that because we... Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Now you see, now, now you're just making people very unhappy with you. <laughs> so yeah, so so mine, mine, mine and uh, Mobius, we had we had these these special ones, and all the rest of them were just you know just just the logo on the front, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they are they are very very nice t-shirts. I don't know if this is what's planned for the final thing, um, but uh, it wouldn't at all be a bad thing. They are very nice t-shirts. I think yeah, they're. I think um, it's a back message. It's going to change. It's going to say, "I back Elite Dangerous." Mm. Oh, is that what yours says? Yes, yes. So I think that that one is the particular one that should be in the box. Yeah. I've got I've got one that um, was bought for me by a very kind person who I don't know he's in the chat or not, but um, he sent me a nice T-shirt. It's absolutely stunning as well. That's the retro um, oh. Lord New Commander T-shirt. Yes, I I uh, I've seen that one. I want I want I may be getting actually. Um, well, I'm, w I'm waiting to see it. May it may be arriving. Oh, where are you? Oh, whoa. But oh. you're right. The, the quality is definitely spot on on these. Um, I actually, I'm still waiting for my Elite Backers um, mug that I ordered back last year. Oh. And um, 
I kept not chasing them up because they'd keep saying, right, you know, if you've not got it yet, don't worry, we'll send it out in the next batch. But they never ever said when we should have had it by. So I emailed them when they released the new one in the shop because I thought, hold on a minute. So somebody can come along, pay half of what I paid, and they can get their mug before I get mine. It looks like it'll be the same mug. So I contacted them and they went, no, it should have been with you months ago. It was like, whoopsie. Right. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I have a question about the t-shirts. Yeah. When you think back to the mug, the white mug, mm -hmm. the first mug, uh, with the t-shirts, uh, are they not suitable for machine washing? Ooh, I think they are. Mm. Mm. I think no, you obviously didn't get it. <laughs> oh, the mu what the mugs are suitable for machine washing? <laughs> no, the mugs were not suitable for yeah. washing in a machine. You had to wash them by hand. So I'm asking that about the t-shirts. Do you have to wash the t-shirts by hand because they're not suitable for washing in a machine? No, I'm, but I don't that think they're suitable over for dishwasher. <laughs> I, I think they're also not dishwasher safe. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've not it? washed mine, and then again, I don't know well. <laughs> Just <laughs> keep them. Oh, there's Bewildered Beast. If you've not received your mug yet either, then email this, uh, what are they called? Support at Zions dot whatever it is. That was really helpful. Do you see that? I've got my finger on the details. I know exactly what to tell people. Cows, the man that can. Support at dot net. That's dot net. Sounds good. <laughs> Uh, let's try this. I just tweak my loadout slightly. Let's let's give that a go. Ooh. That sounds rude, I've doesn't it? That. I just watched you land there. That was a, a nice, smooth, and fast landing. <laughs> That's one of my better ones. You should go back through the streams and look at uh, some of my earlier attempts, <laughs> particularly with rotational correction and flight assist off. That was a good attempt. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I was doing it nice and fast in the Cobra, and what I found was I came in just that little bit too low and clipped that barrier in front of the bay. Yes, and, I, yeah. and that's you. You're you're done. The minute you clip that, you're straight into the ground. Yeah, I've done that a few times. There seems to be like a like really, really over the top damage on that doing that. Well, it might be realistic. I mean, you're moving like 50 meters per second or something usually when you're approaching. So. Yeah, that's probably a realistic amount of damage to expect. It's hardly going to move. I mean, when when it's two smaller ships bouncing off each other, you can kind of imagine the shields of, of each ship kind of repelling enough that the hulls don't meet. But when you've got something the size of the ladder station, you can well imagine that that ain't moving no matter how hard you hit it. <laughs> well, unless you've got that particular star field issue that we had, in which case it looks like it is... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, ah, the whole world's moving around me. It was really weird that. It was just the fact, you know, you, you're trying to do your, your pitch and pull your target in, mm. and no matter how much you pitch, they don't seem to move across your, your crosshairs. Just, yeah, really, everything's really just awkward. kind of doing this at a different rate to you, and oh yeah, it is. Well, I'm glad it's not just me, though, that's the main thing. I'm glad it's been spotted, and it's, there's a ticket's raised, and it will be sorted, so um, we'll get there. Alexander, Commander Alexander there saying, whoop, he's flying backwards. I, I have got into the habit of doing that. I'll come out of the space station, flick on the flight assist off, and then I will uh, kind of scooch backwards until I'm a five five clicks away, you know, because that's the minimum distance to hyperspace away. I, I, I've just got into the habit of doing that. I don't mean to. It's not showing off. I'm just trying to wait for that uh, counter to tick up to 5Ks. And that, that's one of the things, I, uh, do you remember I, I, I mentioned that earlier on, is we, I, I really would like that... Um, uh, the distance indicator to snap to the edge of the screen or something when something's behind you or just off your field of view because it is kind of it, it's critical information to me is, is to know you know that thing that I've got targeted is 5k's behind me or you know something like that I, I really would want to know that and you, you used to get it on FE2 didn't you you used to get that kind of indication well, I mean you could do it some kind maybe some kind of audio advisory to say sort of mass lock broken or you know Wait, no clear. right yeah so I mean, maybe, maybe something related to stations you know that you know you're now clear you're, uh, you're you're now at hyperspace distance or something yeah that kind of means you don't have to worry about it yeah because you get the indication to say that it's it's effectively 
broken, you can't hyperspace because something's mass locking you. You don't get an indication to say, oh, now you're freed up again sort of thing, do you? So you get no kind of warning. But, I mean, more so than that, I mean, even like during combat, I mean, when in, in FE2, when you had a target selected, you could um, you could still see the distance indicator when it went off to the edge, or, you know, it's like target is five light years behind sort of thing. You know what I mean? You used to get that indication. Um, but you don't get that now, so you know. It, it, I kind of, I kind of miss that. I'd like to know that a ship is, you know, a kilometer behind me, and that number's ticking down. So I know it's like, yeah, he's incoming, or you know, it could be that he's running away, sort of thing. That just that tiny little indication of that, uh, that distance to that target behind you or to the side of you, uh, would would be give you much more situational awareness. I really would like to see that. Petrisk asks, have you heard about the damage models from the Frontier Development's Twitch stream? Ooh, um, I think this, didn't, didn't they mention, because someone was asking actually, is because at the moment we just see those pre-canned uh, broken ship models that pop out when you uh, when you destroy it, particularly uh, an anaconda, it's kind of obvious, you see it's the same chunks of anaconda that break away when it blows up. Um, so yeah, someone did ask when are we going to be seeing the proper damage model so you actually see the it, it get progressively more damaged as you beating it, ra rather than it just kind of pop, yay, it's, it's gone. Um, yeah, so I did see that comment on there. I was, whoa, uh, that was an asteroid there. Um, <laughs> whoopsie. Yeah, that, that I, I can't wait to see that because I think that's really going to add some more depth to it because it's going to get that instant visual feedback of it rather than kind of, kind of at the moment I kind of like keep flicking and eyeballing the bottom left indicator to see is like, what's that percent, what's, what percent are they on, what percent are they on, and like seeing how much they're damaged. I think when you can see those physical models and bits hanging off, that's going to uh, be a whole different ball game combat wise. What about the subsystem targeting? Because I know that for the one of the updates in Alpha Two, mm. to, that you basically didn't have a chance once your shields were down because they take out critical systems. Now they certainly seem to have adapted it somewhat, but they kind of maybe gone too far the other way. Um, I. <laughs> I've had more success with the subsystem targeting since they tweaked it, actually. I must admit, in in 2.0 uh, and, and prior to that, it's like I really didn't see any benefit of subsystem targeting. It didn't really seem to have any difference. Um, but I, I kind of got used to it now. I mean, if, if you quickly flick into, say, uh, picking out the, the, the power plant on a ship, you, you can end up destroying it quickly rather than waiting for that, uh, you know, that complete shutdown of their shields and complete hull uh, damage going down yeah. to zero so you can kind of you kind of got that advantage of being able to do things like that um, I think we're going to see more useful uh, abilities of that sort of thing when, when we start to get more tactical gameplay and more interesting elements like you know taking out someone's drives to disable them rather than destroy them because you're just you're after a uh, you know a passenger they have on board for example and you, and you you want them alive um, so I think that sort of thing is going to ultimately be more interesting when we've got more, uh, you know, reasons to want to target subsystems. You know, at the moment there's there's no real reason for targeting the life support system on on anyone really. It's just a bit mean. <laughs> <laughs> I just think you know that it was it was great. It was really effective after the initial tweak. They made it much more powerful to to be able to target these systems and mm. you can disable ships. But I always look at it as something I want to try and use an incursion on that wave five. Yeah. But they seem to have tweaked it back to being less effective, uh, which is probably in response to all the people going, "Gonna stop, Stuart, taking out my life support. <laughs> Leave my power distributor alone." Ah, <laughs> uh, Care Bears. Um, <laughs> no, no, I, I, I know what you mean, though. Yeah, it's, it kind of went one way, then the other way, and then, yeah, I, I, I think you know, it, it's still something that could be tweaked and balanced, and uh, it, it's not a hard thing to do. I, I will, I will say that because I know a lot of people worry. It's like, oh, there's not much time to this, you know, the next version, and you know, they've they've already gone through the combat alpha, and it's like, you know, if if this isn't right now, it's never going to be right, and it's like, well, that's not true. I mean, things like this can easily be tweaked and modified, you know after the fact, so, you know, it's, it's not a concern for me, really. Bewilderbeast asks, uh, Psycho Cow, what kind of joystick hot-ass system do you have? Oh, you've got a really nice hot-ass. I have, I've got my Thrustmaster hot-ass. Um, it's <laughs> the... 
As if Sky, <laughs> Sky's just walked in at the wrong <laughs> moment. <laughs> <laughs> My hot ass warthog. Um, it's the A10C stick system, which is absolutely it's amazing. It's such a metal feel to it, really solid. You know, it does take a bit of getting used to because the spring in it is extremely uh, tough, but the amount of controls you've got really make it such a, an easy uh, system to put your critical systems to. So my sub targeting is at my thumb, and my engine management's at my thumb as well. And you just, it's, it makes it so natural to fly. It really is. I couldn't, I couldn't recommend it more, but at the price tag it is, I'm not entirely sure that the just as good other than the fact it does feel a bit plasticky mm. Cosy Does Gaming says I love the way it is now legit to say hot ass <laughs> <laughs> it is yeah and if you're going down to Lavecon or potentially fin um, Fantasticon uh, you may have a chance to actually touch my hot ass oh I'd like to touch your hot ass I did see your hot ass but I didn't get a chance to touch your hot ass you didn't no, you no I didn't have a chance are you going to Livecon now, Cow? Because last I heard you weren't going. No, no, but I will be sending my hot ass down without me. <laughs> 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 no, as, as of yet, I'm, I'm still, sadly, the, the Cosmos has been sending me a clear message that, you know, when you interview someone to come and care for your, your wife and the Cosmos seems fit to break their physical body um, it generally is a sign that maybe I should make other plans mm. well, well you should be sorely missed sir it's one of these things though anybody that we've uh, offered a caring position for has almost instantaneously lost a loved one and um, this time <laughs> round it seems to be a little bit more personal so the, one of the oh, questions yeah. during the interview which is what I saved right to the end if I think they're going to be quite good is do you have any ill or <laughs> sick relatives or or friends that you're particularly attached to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if, that, if that doesn't put them off, I can offer them the job with confidence. <laughs> I'm afraid to say I won't be at Lavecon this year. Oh no, you can't make it. No. Oh. Oh. Don't, don't drop it. It's, it's just going to be me and Alan sat there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and, and my hot ass. Uh, well, yeah, okay. Look, yeah, well, then, I suppose I'll, I'll do. We can, we can have one hand each on your hot ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. The Bewilderbeast uh, sent with a wee picture of his paper port as a ladder. Where did you get that, Bewilderbeast? That is absolutely awesome. One of the previous newsletters. Oh, okay, okay. I, yes. I've read them all. <laughs> <laughs> I suggest you go back and read them again. <laughs> it was 17 or 18, I do believe. Okay. Okay, ah, Radar. Radar says he's going to be there. Yeah, we're gonna we'll have a party between us. I'm bringing the Jameson. I, I never I never read out anything that he says because I always get his name wrong because it's something along the lines of. <laughs> isn't it, isn't it? Rider, Rider, Rider. It rhymes. It rhymes with Vigor, Rider. See, I just thought it was Radar. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought initially, but I I I, I did apologise at the, my earlier streams. I'd, I'd never get it right. So. I think everyone's taken that for granted now that I just can't get people's names right. So. <laughs> As Mozzie, Mozzie said, or it could be Mozzie's ID, was hoping for 4.0 today. Yeah, so was everyone. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we're all there. We we got a newsletter. That's I, I have to admit, when I saw the newsletter and it was saying about Alpha 4.0, I thought, they're going to release Alpha 4.0 today. <laughs> And then they did. Oh, <laughs> yeah! To, to get that that little bit of anticipation, like yeah. <laughs> I had a, a fantastic video of my daughter using the Oculus Rift um, while touching my hot ass. <laughs> <laughs> I showed oh Karash a picture of a villager in Minecraft with an Oculus Rift on, and I'm not making that up, am I, Karash? <laughs> I'm absolutely no. telling the truth. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. 
Oh dear. Oh, yeah, I heard that, well, I read an interesting article that um, the Minecraft now, what's his name, is Kratos and Notch, mm -hmm. decided to ditch the Oculus uh, development when Facebook bought the company. Yeah. Yep, that's correct. He was he was developing a, a face uh, an Oculus version of Minecraft, and then Facebook bought out Oculus, and Notch went, oh, "I'm not doing it then. Yeah. Screw you." Yeah. <laughs> Not, not she's rather opinionated like that, bless him. <laughs> well, he's entitled to. He's written a yeah. very successful piece of software, and you know you've got to have your own morals. Yeah, no. Whether yeah, people he, like, agree with him or not. Yeah, he doesn't like Facebook at all. No, no, I don't. I don't blame him. It's not great. But hey, if they're going to fund it and we're going to get things sooner, then you know, go for. It. Whoa! Ouch! That hurt. I wasn't concentrating. <laughs> what Sorry. are you doing? <laughs> I just I, I there's no pads available and I'm just waiting and then I just kind of flew backwards into something. Um moving right along. Uh, yes, no, yeah, he, he kind of they they put pixel shader support and everything in there ready because I think they were they were talking about implementing it into Minecraft and then uh, obviously this happened, but someone else has hacked a, a mod together which supports it. So I I've, I've played it. Oh, yeah. It's very. It gives a fantastic sense of scale. Mm. Yeah. And of course, it actually looks really good for Minecraft because, frankly, it doesn't really need a big or high resolution. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. No. It's it's fantastic for it. And you just get this. That's like surreal kind of feeling. You have got everything which like looks like it's made out of like these giant one meter boxes. It, it is really really weird. It's like you're. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very odd environment. I had to go at my first attempt of making the Cobra Mark III in Minecraft Ooh, today, awesome. and I thought the first thing I'm going to do is try and make the you know when in Frontier League 2 you go to land and those wheels come down from under the ship? Oh under yeah. The Cobra? Mm -hmm. I thought I'll try and make them first because mm -hmm. that will give me an idea of how big I have to go. Yeah. And so I made up. I made up three wheels, and the 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 frame around the the wheels. If you remember how the wheels are in in yeah. Frontier Elite Two, yeah. And these wheels were three blocks high. <laughs> now, if you don't if you don't play Minecraft, that's the equivalent of nine feet. Yeah. Yeah. Nine uh, feet high wheels. That's that's. Huge. <laughs> That's absolutely yeah. enormous. <laughs> uh, so I thought, mm, I don't yeah, think can... this is possible. No, <laughs> no. It'll be huge. Although I did see someone actually did do a uh, a full scale model of was it the uh, Enterprise D? Yeah. Uh, that is insane. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, but then that's a whacking huge great ship in itself. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely enormous. Oh, that cost me lots. Yay, I found the port of ladder paper cutout. I'm going to print that on my kick-ass printer. <laughs> Cozy does game in there, so I, I need to watch his docking guide. Yeah, yes, I, I, I did a really bad job of that then, but in, in my defence, I had rotational correction turned off. So. <laughs> drunk in charge. Yes, I am drunk in charge, but hey, it's Friday. <laughs> I wish you'd move your microphone down from your top lip to your bottom lip. Please. Would that be... yeah. Whoop, there we go. Is that better? <laughs> Does it just look stupid? It looks I stupid. Think my email system has gone a bit crazy. I've just opened my emails and it says TripAdvisor. Crash landing just went live. Um, <laughs> TripAdvisor? <laughs> no, that's, that's Twitch. I, I'm, getting, I'm getting sound quality issues, but I think it's me, not you. Okay. To be honest, um, that reminds me of the the best dump joke, the best dump comment I've ever heard in a movie was, "It's not you, it's me. I just think I could do better." <laughs> 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 oh dear. Wait, no, no, come on, turn around, turn around, come on, that's it, my beauty. Ah, uh, gotcha. 
Ah, there's Kronos Blood in the chat who has got an X-55 rhino. <gasps> oh, wow, Jow. That's the new uh, sort of I, replacement for the I, I, my think, I, I, I think these fancy joysticks are rubbish. I think <laughs> I think the best joystick you'll ever get for the Elite Dangerous is a Mad Cat's Fly 5. Not, not that you're biased at all, no. <laughs> no, 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 not biased at all, no. no. <laughs> I have looked at them, and as I say, you know, the, the one thing that really swung the... That wonderful sense. I mean, I've played it with, you know, used it with many games. I mean, it's just, it's so... With, with the Elite Dangerous, I've got my little... Um, switch at the little hat at the front of the throttle and that does my fire groups so I just twitch that to the left and right I've got the thumb hat which is then my th lateral thrusters which gives me the ability to adjust my speed while mm. pulling those tight turns then I've got the pinky switch which is my flight assist off so between all of those I can really do some bizarre little moves that just spin my ship on a dime Shouldn't be allowed. Should be banned. 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 <laughs> it's unfair. Well, I was going to say that when, when they ask, sorry, when they when they ask Karash what you know the the chink in his particular setup was, I thought he would have to answer the the player skill. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a noob. <laughs> uh oh, we've got. Oh. Yeah, like you, that frame rate is kind of been down like that and can't do anything. Yep. Oh dear. That's not good. Did, did I just see an orange ship spinning right round, baby, right round? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I got into the instance, but then suddenly we dropped into single digit frame rates and it kind of made it impossible. There we go. Oh, I'm an idiot. I haven't assigned my. Uh, there we go. I have to yeah, apologise to you, Cow. Yeah? Yes, I meant to record a parody version for you and I haven't got round to it yet. Well, it's no problem. As I say, uh, suddenly I find myself knee deep in another project for no apparent reason, but it just kind of <laughs> happened. <and it's laughs> as usual, it's like, oh, that's. Get out and think, yeah, that's fine. And then suddenly it starts to develop into more than you'd thought, and suddenly there's a lot more work involved. <laughs> I, I read on the forum, you've got an episode of BS News ready. We do, yes. We've just got to get some recording done with um, Simon and myself, and it's just difficult to try and coordinate that um, when it suits both of us, but we'll get it sorted. And it's, I think it's got a few things in it that should get me in trouble, which will be good. <laughs> <laughs> I did see the uh, the adjustment of your character name on that new uh, concept. <laughs> well, yeah, I just I think it was um, I think it was Stig had been in touch and just said you know yeah you can get away with it but I thought well yeah it's true we could probably make it less obvious and maybe a little bit funnier. <laughs> I like the new name. <laughs> It's, it's nothing. It's, it's very innocuous, you know. Richard Swallow. It's just. <laughs> and, his, and, oh. his, and, his, and, and his lovely wife, me. Oh, you are pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Always, I tell you, we, we spent. Um, I spent. We, we kind of knocked out a script, but the script turned into this situation where it was kind of like introducing the characters one after another, and they had maybe a paragraph or two paragraphs of dialogue, and it just didn't go well for what we wanted to be. So we have since gone back to the drawing board, and it's completely become a uh, kind of linear uh, docu soap. It <laughs> should be quite funny. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, quite funny. Hopefully, it'll make people. Uh, giggle if not. I think certainly Simon and I find it quite amusing even reading it which is always a good sign. <laughs> and, and and you'll be glad, you'll be glad Alien, there's not a single my anus joke in there yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, st I still keep going back to that live reading you guys did at uh, Elite Beat and oh my word, every time that pops in I just a little smirk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it, was, it was definitely Darren Gray doubled over, um, almost fuchsia with laughter on the floor. Yeah. But uh, that's that's the sort of photograph. 
right time, the right mood, and we'd all drunk just enough. <laughs> Absolutely. I had the idea in my head the other day of um, taking all the songs for Bugsy Malone mm. and <laughs> rewriting the lyrics for Elite. I mean, I've done one of the songs, so. But, but just do all the songs for Bugsy Malone for Elite Me and just doing an Elite. Uh, dangerous, the musical. I was going to say, yeah, alone. yeah, lead the musical. That'd be awesome. No, Commander no. Alexander asks, uh, "Is this a, is this Carry On Crash?" <laughs> carry On Crashing. Yes. You mute. <laughs> uh, we had a MythBusters. Uh, thing the other stream, didn't we? And I, oh. I don't want to get started on carry on. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be here all night. Yes. <laughs> Come on, dock, dock, no, docking clearance. That's another thing I think we really need. We need a, a repeat clearance button. I just, you know, it's like, yeah. Oh, come on, stop being lazy. Ah. Oh. <laughs> See, <I'm> <laughs> this. <laughs> This new show, this new podcast idea was Dockers. I just love the idea that it's someone sitting on the other side that you're going, uh, uh, requesting docking permission, and they go, yeah, certainly not a problem, uh, just uh, two seconds, hold on. And then you wait five minutes, and then they come back and go, uh, no, no, hold on a second, it'll be fine. Oh, yep, docking B2. And then just as you're about to land, he goes, what's this? Um, pilot of the <laughs> pilot crash, Commander Kamash, if you could just uh, redirect your ship to docking bay five. <laughs> Yeah. Now what you have is you have the two the two docking operatives, two dock uh, traffic control operatives sitting there, and one goes, uh, "Crash landing. You are authorized to land at landing pad three. That's landing pad three. And he then turns to his mate and goes, "Watch this." And his mate's going, "Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No. Wait." Wait, he, yeah, he's almost there. I can see, but no. not yet. <laughs> no, no, wait, no! <laughs> Pad allocation error. Oh, and god your damn it! Landing authorization is revoked. <laughs> Please stand by. <laughs> and you and Crash is there in his copy going, God damn it! I was two meters from the pad. <laughs> oh dear, dear, dear. That's what I you don't, should do, correct, Cow. Has, has anyone had a problem where you're trying to land in a pad and just as you get there, somebody emerges up from it? <laughs> yes, yeah, I've had that happen. <laughs> uh, I, I, landing, you are authorised <laughs> to land at docking pad four, and crash <laughs> flies over and goes. On it. There's always, there's already someone there. How can I land on docking pad four when someone's already there? <laughs> and the two guys <laughs> in the traffic control are laughing their heads off. I think I think if we could get you know in-game comms, it could really open up things. But I think you know the one thing that they're, well, they're not planning on at the moment is doing the sort of NPC um, voice communications because that could be hysterical. You know, you're you're coming into dock and you violate the port, and it goes eh, clearance to destroy, Commander Koresh granted, and all the pilots <laughs> turn on you. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's keep that to the AIs, I think. <laughs> But no, I, I've had a few. I mean, I've had one where uh, uh, it said I could land on a pad, so I thought I'd try it. And even though there was a sidewinder on it, I, I probably crushed the guy. I'm sorry, whoever that was, but <laughs> it worked. I landed. I, I, you know, smack in the middle of his cockpit, but I landed. Hey, it worked. Is this, these are the parts of the game that could be fun. It's just a shame that they tend to be quite fatal. Because there'd be nothing funnier than just getting your wing underneath someone as he's about to dock and then just flipping him upside down. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, One thing I love about being rammed is it gives you that whole uh, Darth Pardon? Vader. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that. <laughs> Do you want to rephrase say... that, Cow? Oh, <laughs> I'm not. I think, I don't, I'm pretty sure I didn't say rammed up the ass. Did I? <laughs> It was I implied. thought it was quite clear. It was implied. Yeah, <laughs> if you get if you get rammed while holding my heart, no, I wouldn't go anywhere there. Um, but when you get when you do get, you know, when when alien came flying into me at the rate of knots, it sends you bouncing and spinning just like Darth Vader coming out of the Death Star at the end, you know. And I think that's just that's awesome fun. Just you end up feeling quite nauseous. <laughs> Thank you. 
was looking at Kronos Blood, who's complaining about the multiple instances of the Dreadnought in oh, uh, being uh, yes. federal, federal bond, isn't it? Let's go and have a look at that. Yeah, I've, I've discussed that before. I mean, I think what it is is the way the networking works at the moment is you get multiple peers hosting these different instances, and then you get these things where two instances have got to bubble together, and both win. <laughs> Effectively, both win the argument on who should still remain hosting the capital ship over the other. Uh, so you end up with two copies kind of fighting for uh, position. Yeah, it's it's one of these silly little network things that, you know, once they they find a way around that problem, it'll suddenly disappear. And we won't think about it again. But at the moment, it looks like a big, drastic, oh my god, because it's such a large object in the game. It looks like it's a really big problem. Or actually, it's just it's it's two values in memory fighting for which one is going to be the winner. And they both kind of come out on top and say, oh, we're going to keep both of you. Yeah. It'll get fixed soon in the next update. Commander Warbrick. There should be a lot of updates in this next um, alpha build. Well, yeah, we did see. Um, uh, was it? Was it yesterday? I think it was on the last stream. Maybe someone pointed out that there was a uh, a post of uh, all the updates which are going to be included in Alpha Four, which was uh, good to know. Whoa, 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 whoa! I have got. Why have I got a player? I'm on. This doesn't make sense. Federal Combat Bond, and I have a human player, which is red. I must investigate. No, no, you don't investigate, you shoot first. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, I got... Oh, no, he's disappeared. Ah, damn. I think they're discussing who's signed up for the exploration uh, mission. That's being touted in the forum. Me, me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I thought. Sure. What, 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 what? now? There's a uh, someone's put up a thing. They're uh, trying to get a, a band of people together to go off exploring the depths when it's uh, when it's available. That is, of course. Why do we have to sign up and volunteer for that? I think you don't. It's just it's just a collective group to yeah. go and have some fun. Yeah, but it's frankly, just. I can get lost inside Port Zalada, so I think I'll just try and stay to somewhere that I know. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just an attempt to organise it a little bit better. I mean, they did, uh, it, in detail on the post, they mentioned about how uh, we might need people for basically doing milk runs to gather materials and stuff, whilst others go off and, uh, you know, push forward the boundaries, so, so to speak. So, yeah, it's just kind of like an organised group trying to uh, get together and go places where no one's been before. No, I'm all for that, but I'm in this game for me. Yeah. And if 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 you get in my way, then so be it. <laughs> but I will take whatever actions are necessary. <laughs> but I'm not in this game to help you. I'm in this game to help me. Yeah. Team player, <laughs> team player. <laughs> I, might, I might go off. I might go off and and do exploring, but. Uh, I'll do that when I'm ready. Yeah. And there's, I think, remember, there's yeah, I think, no I in Team America. <laughs> I think it's one of these things we're all going to want to find our various favourite stations, or we've purchased a station, or you've purchased a planet, or you're going to want to find them and, you know, stake your claim. I have none of that to worry about. Well, you know, maybe, well, see, one thing, I'm, I'm quite keen, I don't know if it'll be, but it'll be lovely to go and uh, have a wee visit to Barnard Star and get some nice in-game footage and <laughs> make some ridiculous uh, blue uh, green screen uh, movies again. <laughs> oh, I, I look forward to that. <laughs> I, somehow I have a feeling that on a station orbiting the planet around Barnard Star, there will be a bar in the station called <laughs> Thargoid and Ferdinand's. I somehow I have this weird feeling that's going to be <laughs> Do you know, that, that's what I love about Frontier, is that, is that they will do things like that for us as a community. I think that's fantastic. And, you know, and they're, they're, not, they're not just cherry-picking, they're really trying to take a flavour of what we're creating. 
Yeah. And even you know that's what I call the the non-canon elite canon. That's <laughs> it's all the, the one thing that I was concerned about is we were trying to you know write these little things in the third grade. You've got no basis to base them on, so you have to just pluck them out of thin air. <laughs> but if you then establish that as a non-canon canon, then um, it gives elite some, you know, maybe some flavorings that they can use that they wouldn't have first thought, like jinx and janks, which is purely down to the fact that I could never spell it right. <laughs> <laughs> And we then created this duality where the Jinx is the imperial version of the drink and Janks is the original Federation brew. <laughs> you have problems pronouncing Barnard Star. Let's be honest about this. I always used uh, to say um, Bernard Star. <laughs> Yeah, it's always been Bernard Star to me, always been Bernard, and, and and unfortunately with that kind of brain that... But I am... You're breaking up, parents. Yeah, we're losing you there, Kev. No, we... Oh, uh, no, you're, you're, you're there, just... I don't know what that is. Give me a second. I'm going to try and turn off this secure thing so I might get disconnected. I hope not. In fact, I'll leave it just now. We should be fine. And then I'll, I'll disconnect it when you want to go for your break. What are we looking at now? We've gone past an hour, actually, I think. What are we looking at? Yeah, we've, ju we've just gone past an hour. So if you want to uh, just we'll have a quick break now and then uh, we can uh, hopefully re reconnect. We can't lose cow. No, oh, no, it should, be, no. It should be fine. I've got one of these, you know, deep connection protection things that came free with my antivirus, and oh. it's a pain. But one one bizarre thing was I was doing a speed net um, test, and with myself disconnected, I got the kind of standard response I expected. But for some reason, when I put it back on, I was getting twice my broadband speed <laughs> reported. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, clearly a glitch. <laughs> Ah, uh, hold on a minute, there's uh, Bibbledebeast is asking what the point defence does. It is meant to be an anti-missile device, mm. but it seems to be a little bit aggressive towards other ships. <laughs> yeah, if you've got an aggressive target selected, it will just shoot and shoot and shoot until it runs out of ammo. Yeah, it's, uh, it's got a very s small range on it. I think it's uh, about 750 metres. You have to be within that sort of range for it to even work. Um, but yeah, it's it's very effective, actually. I think it's. I think that's one of the things that they are planning to sort of resolve that issue. It's not meant to attack other ships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like we said earlier on, it does attract a lot of attention. <laughs> but it's kind of handy because when you get into that position where someone comes flying at you very, very quickly, and you end up scooching past them, sort of thing, and they're just behind you, just as you're trying to turn past each other. They, I always try and kind of do it so my I, the point defense can still get a lock on them and carry on shooting at them. So I get a few hits on them as they're flying outside of my uh, crosshairs. Bum, 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 bum. Who's that you're toying with, Commander? Oh, you just crashed in. Correct. Cra cra was it? Was it Commander? Baba Yats? I was just kind of following them around and they just kind of smacked into an asteroid, so... <laughs> I wasn't going to shoot scared them. <laughs> I wasn't going to shoot you. I was just going to wave. Um, Tachil, uh, he's asking, if you select the nearest hostile, does it prioritise missiles? It's not meant to attack ships. It's not meant to for... It's, it's just not quite working the way they were intending at the moment. It is meant to just talk stuff that's very, very hello. Oh, 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 oh. We, we, we lost you again. <laughs> I think seems to It's only for brief moments. I think we can hear you again now, but it's just kind of like uh, cuts out every now and then. Although I will, I was really chuffed last night that I managed to, uh, you know, flight assist off, 180 degrees, flying backwards, pick a missile out from someone who was chasing me, and take the missile out. 
I was quite pleased with that. Oops, bounty. Yeah, you didn't see that. I wasn't being a naughty boy. <laughs> it wasn't me. I'm back. Hey, there's Ko. Hopefully the uh, you didn't get DC'd. <laughs> no, no, I just I turned off this the secure software. It's great when it's working, but I never trust them. <laughs> Um, I just forgot that I turned it on, and I know that if I turn it off, then it tends. To it's probably one of these automatic settings after reinstalling the software. It's just yeah, yeah. What? We will to be sasks. Uh, so who has the best forum SIG image? I'm attempting to create mine, and a ship logo at the moment. Ooh, Want some inspiration? If you have any recommendations, go talk, well, you, go uh, talk to Mobius. It, <laughs> yeah, it's a good place to start. Would have a look at the Mobius signatures thread, and you'll get a good cross section of all the different ones that are out there. Um, I've not got a typical one. I've got a little ID card that uh, Mobius knocked up for me. There's a lot of good sigs on the forum. I must admit. I will. I will say, if you can try and do it yourself although Mobius does do very good signatures I will hold my hand up and admit to that but if you can do it yourself it's yours you made it me I've I've sort of stopped using a, an image signature and I just have my logo and let a uh, text saying commander alien and that's it that's all I have for a, a sig now it's just very basic sig so I gotta try me some missiles have you tried the missiles at all yet? I have I've actually had some really good success with the missiles except that when I docked to restock them I had something like 26,000 uh, credits yeah. and I docked uh, refilled my, my, my missiles um, took out the station and heading off and then realised why does it say my missiles are empty <laughs> so I went yeah. back in and I landed again and sure enough 20,000 credits down the drain leaving me with 6 uh, yeah no they are ludicrously expensive at the moment I mean I know they are a bit they're a bit of an I win option you do kind of uh, fire and forget and that's it yay that one's dead yeah we'll move along they uh, they are very very Expensive, unnecessarily so. I think I, I'd like to see some more options. Obviously, we're going to see lots of different missiles styles and whatnot become available. So, uh, at the moment, the, the style that we got are uh, just the heat seekers, I think, and uh, they are crazy expensive. Ten thousand to fill up your uh, loadout. That's insane. That's nearly as much as it is to buy the missile tubes and everything. Right, let's. Try them out. Come on, where are you? Concentration kicking in. Sorry, go ahead. It was that my clickety clacking coming through? Yes. No. Oh, was it? Okay. I was just trying to find something interesting to watch on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Who the heck is that? No, 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 no. So, something I was wondering. In the single player combat scenarios, one of the missions is you and a sidewinder have to take out an anaconda. Yeah. And yet in the multiplayer scenarios, it's near impossible to take out the anaconda in a sidewinder. Oh. It's 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 not. You just have to sit on that sweet spot. Yeah. The scenario has all the other blooming fighters coming in at you as well. Yeah. I, mean, I think they've certainly tarted up that beam laser on those those particular scenarios as well because 
Yes, once that hits you, you just watch your shield going boom off night. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, and this was something that was mentioned on the the official live stream. That the uh, the getting that balance right is something which is going to require constant tweaking and uh, uh, and you know. Uh, uh, to sort that out, it, it's not going to be an instant win. And you know, when they brought out the initial alpha, it, it was obviously it was kind of exponentially got really hard towards the end, sort of thing. And the things they tweaked and changed it kind of balanced that bottom end of the curve out, but it made the the higher end even harder still. So, damn, yeah. Now it's uh, it's going to take some adjustment, I think. Let's try that again. It is just amazing to think, that, you know, how um, uh, impressive this small percentage, or this small less than percentage um, game we've all fallen absolutely madly in love with and <laughs> just enjoyed so much is going to, in a very few, you know, number of weeks, become all brand spanking new to us again. Yay! Can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah, this this is the thing is. It's been immense fun already what we've been playing, and you know, like you said, it's such a tiny, tiny thing. You know, everyone's getting really hung up on the stuff we've seen, and yeah, it's pretty much just combat. You know, we've seen a little bit of this travel and it's kind of these multiple scenarios and whatnot, but we haven't really seen what the game is about and what we all want to see. You know, so when that does come out, can't wait, can't wait. We just need all the audio books out before the. The premium beta comes out because there's no <laughs> way we're going to be able to stop to read the thing, so we're going to have to have it playing to our ears. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm I'm relying on. I have to go to work at some point, even if I try and pull a sickie for like the entire period of release onwards, and it's not going to work. So I'm going to have to go to work. So I I might as well listen to the audiobooks on the way into work. That's the way I that's the way I see it. I'll be listening to them as I as I do my run. Or walk, or crawl, depending on the day. <laughs> I think I think Alan's got the best uh, best gig. Apart from what he's doing in relation to the game, he's managed to incorporate Elite Dangerous into his job. Uh, oh yeah, because he's uh, he's teaching it to students, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> using it as a good How example. Did he wangle that yeah. one? <laughs> So the closest I've got to doing that is I, I, I have managed to blag having a, an elite wallpaper on my work machine. So uh, if nothing more, it gets people asking, well, what's that then? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> great talking point. <laughs> and I don't know how many people know this, but Alan Stroud is actually doing Elite the Movie. Is he really? Yes. I didn't know that. Crikey, yeah, what's, so is is like some sort of fan-based uh, tribute movie he's doing? No, no, it's, it's an a, official... It's a prof official, yeah. professionally made movie. I had no idea. He kept that quiet. Not really. No, he, he, he told us at Lavecon. Did he? Yes. It's part of, it was part of his Kickstarter. It was the target was to create a sort of short film version of the Lave Revolutions book uh, take ah. I know that he had difficulty getting the director that he wanted because of his other um, what would you call it obligations and uh, mm. projects that came up so it caused him some grief but I believe he has since um, offered it to some of the senior students which allows them to work with a budget and use all the wonderful professional uh, systems that are at their disposal to hopefully make something that, you know, could sh and possibly inspire a bigger movie studio to think, you know what, there's something in this. Yeah, <laughs> like I say, Alan managed to wangle Elite Dangerous into his job. <laughs> <laughs> Only I could... You know, this, what we've got to do now is we've just got to make ourselves the biggest criminals or the biggest heroes in game so that should they make a film they can't do anything but use us <laughs> <laughs> you know you know how some people uh, are said to have a face for radio mm -hmm. 
Well, I haven't even got the voice. <laughs> so, I'm not going to be in any movie or anything. I'm surprised I get tolerated on this stream, considering my how bad my voice is. So... It's not. It's the brain where we appreciate your brain. It's, yes, it's the, it's the content. Yes. <laughs> no, I, 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 I can't believe I, I completely glossed over. Alan probably said that right to my face, and I completely glossed over that. I do apologise, Alan. I, things like that just go straight through my ears and out the other side. I'm useless for things like that. Never mind. It was it was part of his Kickstarter. <laughs> I probably read it. I was like, oh, that sounds really good. And it's like, oh, I can't remember that. I, 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 I'll blame really, the beer. Oh. He hasn't really mentioned it on the forum at all. That's probably why i just not on the forefront of my mind. But it is something he has talked about. I kind of, yeah, I, I remember little bits and pieces, but I just whoosh. Right over my head. Never mind. Never mind. That's just me. Some things go in, others just completely glossed over. I see that Peter Riskett is looking to try and cooperate uh, with Frontier to create web series, which is, yeah, I think, you know, the, the opportunity is there. They've really kind of opened it up and said, you know, guys, go for it, do what you want, and just put this little message in your products and don't portray the game in a offensive, racist, or um, BS news style. And um, <laughs> all, all should be good. Yeah, now they they have been really really good with it. To be fair, actually, because uh, some some companies could be really really bad on that sort of thing. But now they they've been fantastic. I mean, e even to the point where they've uh, uh, when I had issues with Google trying to get uh, the streams put up on YouTube, uh, they were even trying to sort out some sort of legal notification so I could uh, post it without issues from YouTube. But uh, now we, we've sorted that out still. So yeah, they've been they've been fantastic. To be fair. I just don't understand how you've hit problems, and I could practically um, copy Lady Gaga's latest song, change a couple of lyrics, <laughs> pop it up with foot you know, footage from the latest blockbusters, and they wouldn't bat eyelid. I know. I just I'm just unlucky. I guess I just I've just, I've just cursed myself with the Google monkey. Yeah, they're they're gonna be hunting for yes. you now. <laughs> Yes. No, no, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's just one of those things, maybe it's just, you know, someone flagged, flagged it, I don't know, maybe. It's, we'll see. It's the Star Citizen fans, that's who it is. <laughs> yeah, blame them ones. Them, yeah, wouldn't them count me as well? Never mind, blame them. <laughs> you know, if we, had a, if we had an independent Scotland, these things just wouldn't happen. <laughs> that's what it is. You know, I do wonder sometimes, Cow, which way you're going to vote on that. And you, you, what? As I start thinking you're going to vote one way, and then you say or do something on the either like you did just then or on the forums, and I think to myself, maybe he's going to vote the other way. Then <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell with you. <laughs> That's because I don't know. It's just what it comes down to. What do you believe? And do you believe that? You know, you have to believe one side or the other, and then frankly, I find myself sitting in the middle, going, "I don't believe any of them." <laughs> but it is, it's all, you know, it's all just manifesto rubbish. It's just this is what we'd like to do. We don't know if we mm. can, and we won't find out until we do it. And mm. the other side is going, "They can't do this," and they won't find out they can't do it until they do it. And mm. then you're like, "Oh, well, they oh, nah, I just yeah. give up and just, just stick and base it on what more information as it comes." Yeah, and I I got a horrible confession to make now, but I I must be honest, I I have never voted because I have always got to that that kind of apathetic, you know, conclusion that it doesn't matter who you get in, that they might make a difference for a short period of time, but at the end of the day, they they'll all end up doing the same thing they always do. They yeah. fail to deliver, blame the other guys. The other guys are get in claiming they can deliver and rinse and repeat, you know, it doesn't seem to matter what happens, it's always the same bullshit, so it's uh, it's depressing but it's the way of life it's a democracy and I can't launch, come on Simon says uh, I still say England should get a vote if we want Scotland <coughs> and then if we don't want Scotland new kit <laughs> you can take that question Ken <laughs> 
Wait, which one? Sorry, I had to nip away for two seconds. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was probably best you didn't hear that. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's one of these things, you know, every day you turn on the radio and you've got some guy saying, you know, if you do this you're doomed, and if you don't do that you're doomed, and it just doesn't seem to be that, I think we're screwed either way, so yeah, I'll good. just, you know, I'll keep keep reading what happens and keep looking and work it out and just make a vote based later when I've kind of maybe heard something that sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah. I tend to look at them. I think I should I should pick the ones which you know they, they do correlate closely to my my views on things, and then I I kind of come to the realization that you know even if that is the case, that won't be the case when they get into office or a year down the line. Anyway, it'll change. Things will go wrong. Nothing, well, it's nothing changes, does it? It's always the same. It just everything gets that a little bit more expensive. Yeah. The the only conclusive thing I've come up with is humans are completely incapable of organizing themselves. Sorry. Yeah, well, see, it re always reminds me of Monty Python when they, they reach the conclusion and the winner is the person with the biggest hits. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, I, think it's, I think it's Alex Salmond. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, yes. That's... Might as well just do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have we got a new peak of the week? Up there, yes, it? apparently it's a star map, but very close up. This was a comment in the chat about an hour and a half ago. Oh, that's that's. Oh, I, thought, I thought the peak was a picture of Breben's ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're yeah. gonna be in you so say, oh, much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that that's that's a nice uh, that's a nice ball of gas. Mm. Are we still in politics? <laughs> <laughs> Might as well be. That's actually. Really I know nice. so, some of these graphics. You just look at that, and you think there's no way that's a game. Yeah, I know it's fantastic. I'm just looking at there. It looks like some sort of render that I would have put on my my wallpaper on my computer a few years back. You know, it's fantastic. You got the details in the flares there. You got the layers of all the different like the chronosphere and everything. That's, wow, that looks really really cool. See, this is the problem with this game, is that when we can actually explore around, I, I guarantee like 90% of us are just going to be wandering around the galaxy, looking at these mundane things and just kind of like gawping at it, ooh, sort of things like... <laughs> Slack jawed while the Twitchers come up behind us and blast us out of the skies. Yeah, oh, I was looking like, at was that. Like, oh, but, oh, I'm going to single player. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there's there's a quest. Quest. Cosy Sorry. Does Gaming asks, uh, so Karash, how about we see you do Incursion? Um, okay, okay. <laughs> I, was, I was just about to say, have you noticed there is quite a marked difference between combat in multiplayer and combat in, in the single player? Uh, especially Incursion, those targets are bloody difficult and I don't think mm. it is as simple as it's just the, the lack of gimbaled, although if we could take our ships that we fly in multiplayer into incursion we'd all fire and, and finish it yeah that'd be nice, it'd be five minutes <laughs> it's, it's that wave five, he's an absolute swine yeah, yeah absolutely if you can get past him, which I managed, I don't know how, sometimes he's a little bit easier than usual and um, I managed to stay right on him, took his shields down, managed to get past him with 100% and I got up to wave 8 before I managed to get in the crossfire of two ships, which is deadly. Hmm. Why do so many games make the hardest level somewhere in the middle? And then it gets easier again until you get to the boss at the end, which isn't quite <laughs> as hard as the hardest level in the middle. I think it, it all comes down to the fact that the most difficult thing to do in game design is balance. It is really, really hard. It, it's, it's a very subjective thing. It's difficult to get right, and you know, you think you get it right. You kind of you tweak one thing, and you, you kind of want to mix things up. So you, so you kind of try and design the game so it's not the same experience, just progressively harder. You don't want to have something where it's the same boss over and over again, and just tweaking their health values so they're progressively harder to do. You want to kind of mix it up, and you know, make the next guy have different abilities to the other guy. So you kind of pick out something when you're designing it that um, you find difficult and the next thing you think is more difficult than the previous thing. But then you might find that when it actually comes to someone using, uh, playing it that they actually find the, the 
the second tactic easier than the first tactic, and your careful balancing you've done is useless. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not easy. This Petr uh, Petrusk is suggesting that lots of players will stay at the core systems. I'm not entirely sure because I think um, people are really going to want to go out and see it just because of the state of the game and I think even new players are going to find themselves really getting that hook on, oh what's that, I'm going to go and have a look over there. And I think at first we're going to have a lot of core system activity just while people grind to get the money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think there's yeah, there's definitely going to be that kind of like initially you're just going to see loads of people in the same places. You're going to have lots of really really busy hubs, but then when the explorers start to gather their uh, resources and get more brave, you're going to see everyone's going to start dispersing all over the shop. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Ah, that's right, and it's got the Frontier live stream next Thursday. I don't know if you are going to be yes. tuning in. Oh, absolutely, yes. I will make my best effort to be I, there. I will probably trade in and watch it, but there's no point asking any questions on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you get on Twitter, actually, I did see that uh, they posted up. If you get your questions in on Twitter now, they'll... Uh, uh, they'll have time to formulate the legal answer, <laughs> which yeah, I think maybe is. Maybe you should. Yeah, maybe Aileen should just ask a question. Can you see me in the Twitch window? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you see me? You know, I actually I PM'd Mark Boss, and a couple of days later I got a reply from Mark Boss, and I'm not going to quote verbatim the PM because PMs should remain private, and I've gotten in trouble for quoting a PM. Uh, um, to be more accurate, I got in trouble for quoting my part of the PM. So who knows what sort of trouble I'd got in? I would have got into for quoting the other person's part of the PM. But anyway, uh, Mark, Mark <laughs> Boss basically said they were not taking any questions from Twitch at all. They were only taking questions from Facebook, Twitter, and the forum. Selected questions from Facebook, Twitter, and the forum. And then he tried to answer my question, which was, uh, when are they going to make salvaging legal? Now, I have, as Karash knows, I have this bugbear with Elite Dangerous, where if you come along a canister in the middle of space, floating, and you've done nothing to instigate the floating of said canister, <laughs> and you go to scoop up said canister, you're, it's then marked as stolen. You haven't stolen it, you've salvaged it. There is a difference. If you'd attack the ship and forced the ship to eject the canister and then scooped it up, yes, you would have stolen it. But to just come along and find it and scoop it up, you are salvaging it. So I, I asked don't, Mark Boss. No, no, no. You don't no. agree with that? Well, I asked Mark Boss, when are they going to make salvaging legal? And Mark Boss's reply was, and this part I will quote. It is legal as long as they have a valid permit. Which puzzles me because I was asking from the first person point of view. <laughs> My question was, if I come along and, and when, if I'm not salvaging a canister, when are you going to make that legal? And I'd like to know who it is who's supposed to have this permit to make <laughs> salvaging legal. Well, I think it, it, it's something that's kind of been touched on in the DDF, and I think that's a lot of the problem is uh, there's assumption there that things are known out in the community which obviously have not been publicly shared because it's on different private sectors of the, uh, you know, uh, of the forum. And there, there is this kind of concept of a, of a jurisdiction on um, various areas so it's like uh, you know you, you would have uh, regions of space where like, like you have at the moment you have four different um, scenarios in the alpha and each one has its effectively its own jurisdiction um, so something that you do which is technically illegal in one scenario you don't have a bounty on your head when you arrive in, in another one of these scenarios, because it's a different jurisdiction. So there's going to be this idea eventually that you'll have uh, permits for uh, completing certain actions. So the the NPCs in the uh, ethics and credits scenario, what it used to be, um, 
will have a, a permit for mining, uh, and you would have to obtain a permit for salvaging in that region. Once you have that permit, you're effectively good to go. So Yes, but in, in the alpha at the minute, you're not able to do that. No, no. You know, so, so we're not going to see that until uh, you can actually obtain these permits and buy them on, on the marketplace or wherever they're uh, going to be available. I'm sorry, yet again, this is I think this is the third <laughs> time now I've gone off about salvaging. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm I mean, it, it, I, it's I fine. Know. I think it's, it's, something, it's something you're passionate about and you want it to be right, so it's absolutely fine to question uh, it. You know. I've just got a, a different slant on it for you. Okay, This is something that is a common occurrence in a conversation with my children. When you go to the fridge and there's something lovely and tasty in there that you really like the look of, <laughs> and you help yourself to it because you don't know you don't know whose it is, there's only one thing you do know: it ain't yours. <laughs> and if you know it ain't yours, that's stealing alien. If you know the canister's not yours, it's stealing. It belongs to somebody. That's never salvaging. Salvaging when you go in with the purpose of cleaning up a mess and as a point of cleaning up that mess, you're allowed to salvage. <laughs> Should we just come back to the point of it's legal if you have a permit to go and get yes. it? Yes. Yeah. You need, a, you need permit the frog. <laughs> Yeah, the Frontier will fix it, it's just an annoying thing that I'm I love, focusing on. I love us getting to two oh! years of the game and we're still being told, you know what, we have, we'll get to that eventually. <laughs> just keep saying that to them, they'll go away for a while. It's like, soon, soon. Ah. Wave 7, again. Friggin, friggin. You have got the Steets Cannon, haven't you? I was using it, yeah. <laughs> What I found, um, Karash, is if you go hell in the flight backwards, mm -hmm. if you get on the tail, just because of the manoeuvring of the AI, it does seem to give you a better chance. Um, I think flying backwards is only good if our weapons were a little bit easier to uh, aim and um, had a better range. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's... Uh that's the tricky thing, we kind of got used to doing it with our loadouts that we have, like custom ones in multiplayer, going back to that and having that limited loadout, it does make it difficult to get back into that. I can't wait for the, for the next live stream when they go multiplayer and, and we actively go out there to ruin it for them. <laughs> Man, I Man, Man, you Man, get Man, hit Man. with that! <laughs> Hashtag slot blocking, mm. there'll be ten of us sitting in that slot. <laughs> <laughs> me typing in Twitch chat, do you see me shooting at you? <laughs> <laughs> Answer that question. No, you're still not in our instance. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Have we missed any um, back of decker there? Get up there, arse! <laughs> <laughs> Crazy Does Gaming says uh, it was disappointing the way they ignored those who asked questions via Twitch. Yeah, it was kind of. Uh, I I don't know why they made that decision. I I know they probably had this problem that they could only answer things which were pre-canned questions because uh, they would have had to have gone and confirmed that. I mean, I mean, we've got the the benefit of we can speculate and make up any old. BS yeah. we want to see, <laughs> because we don't really know, we're just having fun speculating about what might be. They know the answers and they've got to be kind of, first of all, they can't say anything which could be misconstrued incorrectly yeah. because people will take it on face value, and secondly, they can't let anything slip in answering a question yeah. that they shouldn't yet release. So they've got a much more difficult question, uh, problem answering questions. So it's uh, I feel bad for them in a the way they probably wanted to just say, you know. But you they know just I'm going to come in with a butt in a sec, don't you? Yeah, go on. Then. <laughs> <laughs> but they 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 could have in their stream they could have said yes, we can see you asking questions on Twitch. Unfortunately, we're not. Ants. Yeah, they could have acknowledged the qu the p a people were asking questions on Twitch and acknowledged b that they weren't going to answer them. But yeah. just 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 ignore them like people weren't asking them in the first place is unprofessional. 
I think it's one of these things where they could they, they will learn that you can engage your Twitch audience um, in different ways without yeah. having to have a question and answer. So I mean, if you you know have what you're doing on the screen and encourage them to ask you questions about flight models and what you're doing and, and maybe giving you suggestions of what to show them, that should be doable. But they've they've already shot themselves in the foot by saying they'll answer questions from Facebook, Twitter and the forums. Yeah. They're pretty much ignoring Twitch completely. Which it is wrong. People are watching via Twitch. You should be engaging with that audience. Did you not see that asteroid crash? Um I I did. I thought I was not as wide as I really was. I really should go on a diet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, whoops. Sorry, uh, I got a bounty for murdering him. He had a bounty on his head, and I've got the bounty. But oh, that's that annoys me when that happens. Never mind. Sorry, Commander Babayats. You, you, it's on my screen. You genuinely had a bounty. I, I, I can't explain that. We are recording it for evidence. Yes, there we go. <laughs> if needed. The Chiel is asking. Sorry, he's suggesting that they needed a dedicated Twitch watcher, uh, like you know our our dear own alien here. But they did. That was Mark, Mike, Boss, Mark, Boss, Mike, Boss. Mark, Mark. Oh. Boss. <laughs> I'm just getting my own bot back because they can never pronounce my name. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I noticed that. I, I noticed that when they tried saying your name. Michael, uh, Michael Brook. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> he said they did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> he paid them. <laughs> I yeah. think I think so I think some Photoshop pictures might have had something to do with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, I I, I do agree. I, mean, I think uh, obviously it was their first attempt. I mean, can can anyone remember the first stream of Crash Landing? Yeah, it was pretty awful. In fact, it's not even on record on YouTube. It was that awful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's I evolved a bit. It, since it's changed. Yeah, it's changed a heck of a lot. We've got used to it. It's and and I think they will change it. It's, it's become that good. We we have a certain other Twitch channel copying our format. Well, yeah, why not? It's it's that good. You know, and what's it? It's uh, that um, good. Yeah. Um, I can't think of the what's the thing though. Uh, it, sincerest form of flattery and all that. Uh, <laughs> Imitation is the sincerest that's form of flattery. Yeah, that's the one. But no, I, 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 try again that one. I'll <laughs> do an exam. I mean, I mean, I'd, I'm not going to speak for Karash, but I, I'm pretty sure we don't mind that they've no. copied our format. <laughs> we are flattered. <laughs> But we're also going to big up the fact that we came up with it first. <laughs> well, I just I just looked at what other people were doing and thought, well, let's do something like that. And you know, I've seen it in other uh, other streams as well. I mean, I, I've been following the the guys doing the Carmageddon uh, remake, and uh, you know, they got they got two two of them on on screen, and they've got yeah. someone else off to the yeah. side. For but the if you if you take in every game there is out there on Twitch, no, we're not the first to come up with this. Mm. Yeah. But as far as Elite Dangerous goes, yeah, <laughs> he came up with this format. I I have to say, you know, it, it certainly makes it a much more watchable show. Um, whereas I tend to twitch a situation or a, a particular task uh, that I'm trying to either show or trying to work out, rather than which you've got is this kind of open format, which is wonderful. I absolutely thoroughly enjoy, you know, listening when I get a chance and catching up with it when I miss it. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, it's uh, this is something I just thought it'd be really fun to do, get people, and this is why I wanted you on the show tonight, actually, because, you know, I felt like, you know, I've been trying to get the community involved, and I've been thinking, I've, I've been missing this opportunity to get someone on each week, and I want to try and get other people on, so, you know, if, if anyone does want to come on the show, I know I, I have promised one other commander that they can come on next week, because I guess it was you coming on tonight, Grant. Um, so, it's gonna be, we're going to have someone else on next week, but yeah, I mean, if anyone does want to come on and just have a vent, have a rant about this, something, you know, just tell us about what they love and what they hate about Elitism, yeah, anyone's yeah. welcome to come and, like, you know, just PM me on the forums or something like that, and uh, yeah, it'd be great to have other people come on and have a I, chat. I have to admit, when I suggest to crash the idea of having a second person to talk to it wasn't me all the time was the idea it, the idea was for different people to get involved mm. yeah yeah which makes sense it gives everyone a different opportunity to bring a different topic I mean 
I know I was um, recently talking to John Harper on his podcast about my thoughts for the the community aspect of the game and how the forums and how things will progress going on and we had a really good discussion about it because I do have this sort of worry that when these books hit what next? <laughs> yes. You know, when the game comes out, what's next? How how do we continue to to keep enthused and and keep this content? I mean, that's why I wanted the likes of BS News, and now we've got the Dockers podcast. Hopefully, going to come to fruition as as ways of continuing to create community driven nonsense to excite people to be involved in the game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and that's that's. You know, I've I've said it several times, but for me, the you know the Kickstarter was only the beginning. You know, it is is for me, it's it's continuous. You know, so keep 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 the interest there, keep people talking about the game, keep people uh, uh, new people coming in and everything. And that's that's absolutely what the the aim of it was really was to get uh, everyone talking about Elite all the time and just keep that ball rolling. Because we do have some challenging forum posts every couple of days, <laughs> don't we? And it makes you think, why am I in this thing? Why am I talking? And you start banging your head off the computer mouse. I was like, why are they talking about Newtonian flight again? My goodness. Yes, yes. Uh, someone's made a comment in the chat. Uh... Bifford made a comment in the chat. By the way, Karash has a Twitter feed. There's just me and one other guy following him at the moment. Uh, Bifford, you might have the wrong Karash. Yeah, I have. Uh, um, oh, Christ. Three R's. Yes, it's yeah. There's there's Karash with two R's. I don't know who that is. Got it a couple of years ago, and I never been able to really increase it. I, my my Twitter is actually three R's, which is really yes. really annoying, but. Hey, so yeah, so if anyone wants and to you follow have on that, they can. Uh, Twenty-four followers. I, I do so at the moment, yeah. I think Bifford's got the wrong person. Yeah, don't follow that person, whoever that random person is. Who's literally, I've still got the new egg icon on Twitter. Is honestly not using the account. Is literally just uh, twit yeah. twit blocking me. I have the same thing with Alien. Mm. If you look up Alien on Twitter, it's uh, some guy. Who's never tweeted? So has something like sixty people following an account that's never tweeted. I hate that. I don't. I can't work it out. I actually tracked this guy down. Right, yeah. Who's got this account? I contacted him. Mm. He's a UFO nut in America. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Uh, he's so he's got some sort of book published. That's how big of a nutcase he is. Oh dear. And um. He's squatting on the account. He's not using it. Oh, I hate that. Yeah. Uh, Twitter's rules say you're not allowed to squat usernames, mm. right? I contacted this guy and said, well, you're not using it. Let me have it. And the guy said, well, maybe we can work something out. Ah, uh, yeah, here we Implying go. Implying I'll how sell it to you. Yeah, how much So when I pointed it? out to him, Twitter's rules state you are not allowed to sell usernames. Mm. He went, oh, no, 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 I wasn't trying to sell it to you. Really? Then yeah. <laughs> please, please state your uh, your intention, then. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tried yeah. telling Twitter this guy was squatting on a username, and Twitter don't care. No, no. He really it's... couldn't give a rat's ass. No, because I, I think it would, it would be an absolute nightmare for them to police millions of users, so they literally just leave it up to the community to sort themselves out. Uh, that, that is the shame of things like that, is... These services, they they do kind of. It was the same sort of thing I got off YouTube. It was like you know, I got one of those videos flagged with a content dispute. They didn't even want to look at me at all. It was like, yeah, you can sort it out with the person who says the dispute. And I was like, really? You know, it's like not a, not even want to look at it and see that it's a video which I put together myself and it's got nothing. Okay, thanks YouTube. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Karash, um, we've got Defiler101 in the Ooh. chat who is asking about the differences between flight assist on and flight assist off um, and whether or not it allows you to make turns off with it off that you can't with it on. Um, it might be an idea just to give him a quick show yeah. of the sort of differences in the control because it is 
It is something that's not quite as cut and dry as you'd think, because I find that, you know what you do is you fly you get your full pill, bring your thrusters back, hip flight assist off, pull back on your on your stick, but you don't quite flip or anything. But you do just get a much tighter turn. Yeah, yeah. I'll try and uh, I'll go into the asteroid field now because we'll have a few uh, a few things for me to crash. I mean, uh, avoid. Um, so <laughs> we we give it a go. Yeah. No, it definitely is. is it's really interesting with having flight assist. Obviously, you can play the game with no uh, with, with leaving flight assist on entirely. And uh, but uh, I do find that you can do some really nifty maneuvers. I mean, one of my particular favourites is uh, uh, you pull the throttle right back, turn the flight assist off. 180 degree turn, put the throttle into reverse, and then you can continue in that thing. So you don't lose your velocity vector. You're still travelling in a straight line, and you just you're just turning on a, on the on a spot, and uh, effectively kind of continuing in that vector in, in a 180 degree direction. So you you can get some really n interesting things there. Um, also, the thing is that, uh, that that you mentioned as well, Alien, wasn't it? The uh, that using the um, vertical and lateral thrusters when you're you when you're doing a tight turn, you can uh, bank tighter by using those thrusters at the yeah. same time. Um, and what was it, what, what was the thing I was doing very early on in Al in Alpha One? I was doing there. We were just joking. We should name it the crash corner, wasn't it? It was like you know, aiming around an asteroid, turning the flight assist on, and then using the uh, the vertical thrust to just kind of keep you banking while still facing the asteroid. So, yeah, you can do some pretty interesting maneuvers with uh, with the flight assist off. Uh, Defiler, they're saying it's basically Newtonian mode. Yeah, it, it is kind of like switching Newtonian flight on for 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 a second. I mean, uh, you know, you can either have it. Uh, toggleable, or you can have it so you have to hold a button so it, to turn it on and off. Um, I've played with a few different um, ways of having it. I kind of like to have it on a hold, so I can I can have flight assist on a majority of the time. But then when I want to perform a maneuver, I just hold, I just squeeze one of the buttons, perform a tight banking turn or a spinning around 180 whilst maintaining my velocity still sliding. And uh, yeah, you can do some pretty nifty things with that. I quite like that. Or is uh, was it Chris Roberts says, "Look, I'm flying backwards. Look, I'm flying backwards." Yeah, I think <laughs> exact words were, "Are you who wanted Newtonian mode? What am I doing? I'm flying backwards." It's like, yay! I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and this is loading really slow. They, they love they love the helmet flipping, and I don't know if anyone knows of a game called Neverhood. Uh, it's a claymation video game. Which is amazing in itself. Yeah. And um, I think I remember on the that. soundtrack for the game, one of the songs is "I'm gonna flip the bird, bird. I'm gonna flip the bird." And I, I just sort of re <laughs> There's not much to the song, and it's only like a minute and a half long. Yeah. But I thought of rewriting it to uh, "I'm gonna flip the helmet." <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna flip the helmet. I'm gonna flip the helmet. <laughs> Uh, Brilliant. But they love that. They love that. <laughs> the, the the pilot getting into the ship and they're all going, Ooh. and he flips somewhere and they're like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a bit. It was it was very American. I think that presentation. Yeah. Chris yeah. Chris Roberts doesn't need to bother with the rest of Star Citizen. Just just have his forty million dollars spent on a pilot getting in a ship and flipping a helmet. Whoosh, whoosh! Look at that! Look at that! We're yeah. getting into the dodgy territory. Yes, yes. Uh, sorry, we'll, we'll go back to the questions. Go back. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Oh, okay, you went there. Yeah, oh, so dear, trust dear. you to to turn it like that. <laughs> Professional oh, habit, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. But think about it, think about how much they've not had. And, you know, seeing a, an actual animation working mm. of a hit, well, almost working of a helmet being tossed into the air. It just, yeah. I mean, I can understand that kind of let's be ridiculous and, and make a laugh out of it. Because I think if we had a similar launch in the UK, okay, we may not cheer and jeer, but they would certainly get a very polite golf clap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'd yeah. be like, is that it? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's. I, I I've seen that directly. I mean, we had an American manager come over one time to our company, uh, and you know he expected that kind of like uh, uproar, like yeah, we've done really good in the last quarter, and, 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 and like there was like silence, a like, deathly silence. Everyone was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like that's the British attitude. It's like mm, just carry on. Mm. <laughs> uh, we should get back to the questions. Sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, Takiel's answered Karakino there. Sorry, I just I, I highlighted that one. The 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 ship. Oh, yeah, I think it's the um, 
the Laker 9 type uh, thing. Uh, Cozy Does Gaming saying uh, I should drink Super Strength beer for the next episode. I can go one better. I can drink Jameson whiskey if you want. Um, Bracket Decker is saying, is this a Star Citizen bashing stream? No, it's no, not. We're, we're no. not bashing Star Citizen. We're, we're just commenting on things we find Funny. ridiculous. <laughs> The I have to say though, you know, when it comes to Star Citizen, and, and I'm going to try and raise the tone here, but I realise by this confession I can't. Uh, <laughs> I actually backed it to a rear admiral level. <laughs> I only Not backed it to about 60 quid, which is a, one of the weaker ships. Well, it was, it was Star Citizen that um, was the first one that I backed. I didn't know I got into the Star Citizen. Yeah, you've got the same scenario as Karash then. Yeah, I... Star Citizen before Elite Dangerous came out with their Kickstarter. Yeah, I literally well, was I, feeling I, nostalgic and thinking, ah, yeah, I'd like to see another space game. I kind of miss Elite, and then I thought, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll back this. And then they went and launched their own. <laughs> you see, I was that, this was after all the Kickstarters. In fact, this was after the Kickstarters had finished on both of them, so I was late to the party. Um, so I was really excited when I stumbled across the fact that Elite had a backers app and were still offering all the bits and pieces. Um, I think I'd stumbled across them just in the towards the mid beginning of February or end of January and thought I can't afford to back any of these. I'm absolutely skinned <laughs> and and then was over the moon when I could still get in on the sort of on the bottom. I'm rolling. <laughs> this is nothing but bottoms tonight. I'm really sorry. I'm gonna have to put my put my hot ass away. Ah, <laughs> uh, you don't have to worry, Kay. We we love your hot ass. My wife may be taken into another room. <laughs> Apparently, it's too, my my hot ass is too noisy. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, good. I mean, it's near enough that it might might pick this up. With the fire button on it is a little bit noisy. Yeah, I, I uh, have I have found that with um, with the X fifty two, it does uh, get a bit clicky clacky after a while. I did have to take it apart. I, I you can tell how much I have like brutalized this thing since I've had it. The uh, the secondary trigger on the on the main uh, the main one, you've got like two modes. You can kind of hold it halfway in, and it'll activate one switch and then you have a uh, second switch later on if you squeeze it a little harder. I'd been slamming the fire button so hard that that secondary switch had gone uh, and I, <laughs> I had to go to take the whole thing apart and kind of just just kind of just bend the spring a little bit back into shape so <laughs> at the resistance there again. I thought, yeah whoops I'm playing too much elite I think there. Oh, I'm Tarakino has uh as a question, well, it's more of a comment than a question. I hope I can fit a plasma accelerator on that ship, even the 250 tons one. I've got to defend myself and my little precious cargo. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, I can't wait to be able to do that again. <laughs> oh. you'll, you'll just fit the mining laser and go bow. Yeah, yeah, oh, bow. yeah. yeah. Just bang, <laughs> bang, snipe them from a distance, yeah, absolutely. Oh. Of course. There's um, Commander Sloma is asking if Star Citizen fails, will it be a bad sign for all big game projects on Kickstarter? I have already reached its usefulness um, because the bandwagon on bandwagon on games is just that anybody who's anybody thinks I can make a game, therefore I'll do a Kickstarter because I don't want to go through the proper channels. And I think the risk of backing games is going to get worse. Um, I think when you've got a big company like the likes of Frontier and um, now what is what is this company? Is it still Robert Industries or whatever? Is, it, is that the fictional one for Star Citizen? Uh, yeah, I, well, I think they kind of cross over, don't they? It's weird. Yeah, but you know that's that's a big company, and they're not going to disappear. So it's not going to fail. It might not be as successful as it perhaps deserves to be. And I think the big problem with Kickstarter is anybody who's interested backs it. Yeah. So yeah. at that point, if the developers have really only made the costs of making it, then the best they can really hope for is to break even or a small profit, unless they actually bring something, you know, exceptional to the table. And I know that I've got, I backed Ethereum, I backed uh, Pulsar, 
and I have to say I'm not a particularly big gamer so I don't know why I did it I think I just got caught up in the whole community aspect and the fun side of things Yeah, I, f- yeah. I find them a, a little bit and it's maybe unfair for Pulsar because it was really really early alpha and I've not played it since mm. but that's the problem I've played them once and I'm not likely to uh, go back I, I think you're saying about is this the end for the games on Kickstarters I think the Jokers will be the the ones the what the Kickstarters that are, are just to have no chance in hell. Mm. I think they're obvious. During yeah. the Elite Dangerous Kickstarter there was a, a game on Kickstarter there was a Kickstarter for a game called Lore. Mm. And it was a joke. There was absolutely <laughs> no way this person could do this. Yeah. It, it was, was so obvious. It was way too ambitious and it was like the the, the concepts were just like rough fag packet sketches weren't there and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It, it was absolutely ludicrous. It was like, yeah, this, you this, saw is, it, didn't you yeah, this is never going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It, I think that it's going to be that sort of thing. It's the ones that are serious and stand a chance of achieving what they say they're going to achieve. Well, you can see that. And then the ones that just don't stand a hope in hell's chance, you will see that. And it's it's going to be like Marmite. You 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 have one or the other. Yeah, yeah. It's it's going to be very bipolar. I think it's just going to be, it's going to I split think, everyone. It's just becoming a very lazy way to raise money. Yeah, yeah. There is there, there is that but risk. One thing the Elite Dangerous uh, got criticised for with the Kickstarter is is they weren't pitching well enough. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't. I, I think it, it, it was such a new, odd thing to them to have to go through this kind of campaign to kind of. Normally, they'd go to a publisher with a with a concept and they'd have it all pre-prepared and everything. With this, it was like they were trying to convince people who already wanted the game why it was a good idea. And it was like, well, you didn't need to convince those people. You just needed to get the word out there so those people knew about it. You know, it's not you, you. didn't need to try and convince people so much. You just needed to, you know, get raise the awareness. You know, that's that's what you, you should have concentrated on. So it was a completely different uh, concept to what they're used to. I think with uh, you know presenting an idea to a publisher. So I've actually got into an into the asteroid instance now. So I'm going to attempt to uh, turn the flight assist off. That I see hands free, and I'm still rotating. Awesome! It is completely Newtonian. I love it. Love it. So I've got it completely off at the moment. What I can do is I can I've got it on toggle, so I can squeeze this button in now. Which is, this is an interesting thing that someone actually uh, asked me whether or not it was possible, um, and I went away and tried it. What you can do is if you uh, go into the menu on the right here, turn flight assist off by default, and then you have the button assignment in the menu set up, uh, like I do, um, which will if I go find it, I've got flight assist set to hold mode. So, um, so well, toggle mode off. So it means I have to hold the button to flip flight assist on and off. So what that means now is I've got flight assist off by default, so it's fully Newtonian. I can rotate around freely with my hands. As soon as I squeeze just the one button, it puts flight assist on for a brief period of time, just enough to slow me down. It's like a handbrake. You can think of it like that. So you can do some really cool maneuvers. You can, uh, you know. If I try not to crash into asteroids, because that'd be a really pants demonstration, but I can do things like this where I'm still sliding. My the velocity filter is asks, on. what key button do you use for this uh, momentary press of flight assist to save? Um, at the moment, I've got. Um, if I come to a complete halt, I'll show you. I've got on the um, on the left-hand controller on the X52. There's a mouse wheel on there. Which you can use to, if I can find it, there's the mouse wheel, which you can roll up and down. Um, if you squeeze it in, it's just like a middle mouse click uh, on on your, on your mouse. So I use that because it's it's just in a nice, comfortable position. And I think by default, it's not mapped to anything in the default key binding, so it just kind of made sense to put it on a key which wasn't going to conflict with anything. And uh, I find that that works quite well actually. It gives me a nice little kind of uh, see. I can kind of. Flick it. I can kind of flick it on and off a little bit to kind of slow myself down if I'm gliding too far to the side. And you can do some really nice little uh, banking turns and whatnot to get around asteroids. I, I really, I really do enjoy playing flight assist off. It's, it's not really effective in combat. It is you're, it's so difficult to be effective with flight assist off 
it's just not really worth it. It's not a fun experience, I find. Yeah, I mean, you've got the benefit of saying, it's like, well, I can, you know, if, if you can manage to do it. Yeah, you've got that, well, kudos, you know, you can you can do something which is very difficult. That's, you know, round of applause to you, sir. But still, it, I don't find it enjoyable. I think it's, you know, it's like, it's not fun, not fun. But it is fun to mess around with it and toggle it on and off every now and then and just kind of... Uh, do some really interesting turns and banking maneuvers, and you, I, I don't know if it's coming through in the stream, but the most obvious thing you can see is that um, uh, the space dust and little bits of asteroids and stuff are uh, very much sliding around in different orientations rather than directly forwards. So that's really cool. You can get the the effect of velocity is very apparent. Petris wants us to say thanks to Mike Evans for putting flight assist off in Elite Dangerous. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you very much. It's it's definitely uh, awesome. It it kind of it it fits that eighty twenty rule, doesn't it? It's like you know you, you kind of, it kind of made everyone happy in that respect that you've got this option, and I, like I said, it's my favourite thing to say: options, options, options. Give people the options, and they can decide to do what they want to do. Um, and it very much has fit that niche, isn't it? That it's. Uh, you know, majority of people can just jump in and play, and it's great. And they don't have to think about it. But then, for the hardcore players that really want that Newtonian dynamics, they can uh, go in and just toggle that option off. Fantastic! So, thank you, thank you, Mike Evans. I'd love to see somebody, you know, showing how they control it using the full FA off, because it's something I just find that you end up spiraling. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm. I'm trying it now, but I, yeah, it, I really do feel like I, I'm just too twitchy on the on the stick to use it effectively. Yeah, I'm that's what I find. Yeah, constantly like, just adjusting and shimmying to the side, and I'm like, uh, uh, and you, you spend so much time compensating for that little bit of drift that it's just it's, you just don't enjoy it. You're just you know you're focusing more on trying to keep yourself in a straight line than kind of uh, enjoying the experience. So yeah, it's not ideal, I don't think. But it's just the fact the game feels so nice and natural. You're instantly kind of going, you just take to it. it. Just there's not a sort of barrier of control to to learn. It just works. Yeah. And then you've got these benefits of you know. Well, I'm I'm quite happy with how it's working now, but I'd really like to be able to do a tighter turn. Well, you've got these other tools that you can use your thrusts and your FA off just to give you that wee edge, and it makes it makes you feel like you're like a world class superstar pilot. Yeah. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> Pulling back hard on your joystick and going yee yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, it does. It, it's really fantastic when it when it when it works and you pull off one of these nifty maneuvers by you know skipping it sideways in between things and you know getting the drop on someone by turning around and being able to fire at them and yeah, it's really really fun when you do that and and I, I do it a lot intuitively, not thinking now. Um, I just kind of flick the flight assist off for a second, do this little maneuver, and then let it go back on again and carry on playing. It's, you know, it, it's very, very kind of natural to kind of jump in, do it, and it's fantastic. It really is good. Ah, oh, I've got to load again now because I just, just turned myself into a, another crater on an asteroid there. I have to go AFK for a moment, Koresh. Okay, no problem. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to follow Alien for two seconds. Okay, no problem, no problem. Go ahead. See, see what she's up to. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, I will check up on the uh, questions. What have we got on here? So, uh, did it there. It's Phoenix, you got a special setup for flights this off on the X-52. Use a secondary throttle for engines forward back. It behaves more like Frontier FFE model. Mm, that's interesting. <laughs> Defiler, maybe you're meant to give up on using it for perfect straight line. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely not particularly great for uh, for that sort of thing. <laughs> Smuggalo, yes, let the designers design the game. Absolutely, they've got much more experience putting games together than all of us lot. So uh, we can't complain, really, can we? Who have we got here? You've got the Bendy. I'm back. Ah, guess who's back. Oh, poor Cozy's never used a hot ass. <laughs> well, if, if you can make it to LaveCon, you, you can...
try Kao's hot ass. Or you can even, you know, have a go on my hot ass if that's not there for you. We like to, we like to flaunt our hot asses around, don't we, Kao? Yeah, we don't mind anyway. Can Oh. Oh, ow. Sorry, Alpha Backer, you're gonna be really, really annoyed with me. Who was that? <laughs> there we go. I don't know I don't know who that was, but sorry. I've got a why am I getting a bounty again? This I can oh. I think the instance is bugged again because yeah, I just got a bounty for killing someone with a bounty. <laughs> And I'm not putting that video up on the screen. What an idiot. There we go. I'll tell you the, the exciting uh, thing about the fact that we've got all these controls is the last time when we had Elite Meet, mm. we didn't have Elite to demonstrate these things with. And it, the game works brilliantly with these flight, uh, flight controllers. I mean, I think, what is it? We, I think Phoenix Defire was there. He, was, he had his hands all over my hot ass um, and using my track IR. Mm. Um, to use, now what was the game we played? It wasn't Independence War, it was it was one of these modded versions, it was the Battlestar <laughs> yes, the, yeah. the Leipzig game yeah. which was Free Space 2 was it? I think modded. it was, yeah it was Battlestar Galactica yeah but it was it was a mod for Free Space 2 or yeah. a sort of re reworking of it oh, right. uh, that's when I realised that you don't want to mess with Phoenix to fire because he was bloody good at it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yep, stay away from him. <laughs> Petra's there saying that, yeah, the normal version of the X-52 is, is quite cheap in comparison. And I will be perfectly honest with you, I, I don't really see that much of a difference between the the normal version and the pro version. I mean... The, the pro version's got a slightly nicer paint job, and I think the uh, the spring setup is slightly more rigid than the uh, the normal version. But there's there's mods you can do where you can kind of make the springs a bit stronger on the other one. So, yeah, I mean, if if you're on a budget and the the X52 Pro seems a bit much, then you know you can the normal one is just as good in my eyes. Or if you're really on a budget, the Mad Cats Fly Five is Cats. good. Uh, someone tells me that's that's really. I've heard lots of good things about that. Someone tells me it's very good. <laughs> that's right. The X52 Pro's got the programmable uh, LEDs. Uh, that's no, 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 no. You don't want that. You don't want that joystick. That joystick's rubbish. Yes, yeah, terrible. Who's that? Like, like you can, you can customise all the colours on the bottom and on the top and all that. But but why would you want to do that? <laughs> It's quite it's quite cool when you're sort of flicking your fire button. I mean, I've, I've, my my son's got one, mm. but you know, to be honest, you can customise any LED with a good marker pen. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you just did you just say your son's got a hot ass? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Just when you think it couldn't get any lower. Cow's gone silent. <laughs> <laughs> it's got no return. Um, Oh, yeah, I'm not sure I can respond to that without making it worse. <laughs> oh dear. He's a huge fan of the Oculus. Uh, oh yes, yeah, no, it's, uh, I love it. Because of course you, you've just got your dev kit one, haven't you? Oh, we've, have we lost K? I think we've no, lost. No, no. Okay. Damn, we haven't lost count. We <laughs> Keep sending those packets. Who's that? Commander Alexander there, say Kempston. Yeah, there, there's a joystick. That's a proper joystick for real elite fans. I just remember the Spectrum and Daily Thompson and damaging your oh. rubber key membrane. Oh, and Karash and I have mentioned <laughs> this quite a lot oh. in the last few streams. <laughs> did you did you ever do the little trick where you could you could use the like the little Lego piece between two keys and you could just rock it back and forth to get it as just just the right sort of size? <laughs> no, I no, no. I I was one know, finger in both hands. <laughs> one finger in both hands, and you would trrr it as quick as you can. Oh. I, I just remember we would uh, no, what was it? it was Hillsfar, Hillsfar, or one of the Dungeons and Dragons games that came out. And there was an arm wrestling scene, which was a joystick waggler. <laughs> I remember we, we must have broken the sticks. 
<laughs> and the terrible thing to say nowadays is very non PC to have a joystick waggler. But well, we took the actual thing to bits and then wired it and put wires and cell taped them to our fingers. So all you had to do was just quickly tap your fingers together. Tap your finger. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I uh, used I used the auto fire on my competition pro joystick in summer games to throw the javelin a ridiculous distance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Just makes you wonder what we're going to come up with our ways of uh, beating the systems in Elite. <laughs> I, I tried the competition pro joystick I have now on Elite Dangerous and I, I think the joystick it's not working probably because the auto fire doesn't work. Mm, mm. But it doesn't work on other games. I've tried it on either, so I think it's the auto fire that doesn't work. Uh, but I didn't buy the joystick to play it. I bought the joystick for sentimental reasons. So. <laughs> what do you think of the cars in the station? Do you not think they should have gone for trains, a sort of monorail system rather than cars? Because the cars look really bad. Yeah, I, I mean, I think they're very much place order. I have noticed, I've, I've got it really, really close to a couple of them. I've noticed they're, they're not even textured yet. They literally are just yeah. plain grey. So I think they're very much place order. But you're right, I think they, they I, I would expect them to do something a bit more kind of... The minute we get out of the cockpit, it's going to be Grand Theft Auto in the station. <laughs> yeah, you're going to see cars floating off the roads. <laughs> I tell you what, I'd love to see uh, Frontier's to-do wall for Elite Dangerous. Oh my word, it, it must be like one whole side of the office or something, you know? <laughs> A building of its own. <laughs> oh, they, they do actually have two buildings, yeah. <laughs> oh, and I've been DC'd. Oh, damn you, damn you, damn you. Uh, we've got a question there, Bill would be, have I ordered the DK2? Alas! No, I, I have not ordered the DK2. I, I would really like the DK2, but um, as Oculus are very likely to produce the consumer kit shortly after, I can't justify spending money on three virtual reality headsets. I'm already uh, in the bad books for buying the first one. So, <laughs> Yes, I would like all of them, but no, that's not going to happen. I think I've got one on order. The DK2? Yeah. Ooh, I might be visiting your house then to try that. <laughs> <laughs> as, you're driving past, as you're driving past my area, you can pick me up on the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got to go through that way, yeah. It's only, it's only like a day to get there and be fine. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, Caracino, yeah, I feel your feel your pain there. So, uh, you're left-handed, you're struggling to find something better than a 360 controller. That is the annoying thing with these specialised controllers, is that they are very uh, suited towards right-handed players. It's really, really frustrating that as, you know, if a manufacturer was to come out and do that, they'd obviously have a niche in the market that they could fill, but obviously they don't feel there's enough need, which is really annoying. Yeah. It'd be nice if someone would come up with an ambidextrous one. Well, he says, I think I think I'm, I tend to be ambidextrous. Uh, I'm left-handed for a lot of things in writing, and yeah, I quite happily use these joysticks, right-handed joysticks. From scissors, scissors, I struggle with. Mm. <laughs> I've always said I'm, I'm ambidextrous. I can do bugger all with both hands. So <laughs> that's true. Oh. oh. Come on. If it wasn't for us lefty snow dog, there wouldn't be anybody creatively designing nice joysticks. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jimi Hendrix is responsible for left handed guitars. Mm. And he used his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> play it with any part of his body, can he? I, I was watching a program called Baggage Battles. And one of the episodes, they go to this uh, hard rock cafe auction, and they're, they're picking up this guitar and they're going, Oh, it's Jimi Hendrix's guitar. And I look at the strings and I go, That was never Jimi Hendrix's guitar. Because <laughs> <laughs> the strings are on properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, dear. And not worn. <laughs> Oh, Cozy Goes Gaming has to go. Right. Farewell, Commander. See you next time. I'm really struggling to get back into this instance. I was not having it. 
And you're you're not well. You you're coming up on three hours. Oh yeah, of course we are. Actually, we're going way over. I think yeah, we probably should cut it at that point actually because the YouTube video is going to be huge. So uh, yeah, well, um, <laughs> it's going to take me three hours to upload the damn thing. But there we go. Yeah, I have been doing that actually for those uh, um, who, who've been catching up on YouTube. I've been uh, uh, uploading the video separately because. Uh, it's just it's just easier. I get better quality and everything on there. So uh, yeah, it's just it's just easier that way. So yeah, I think um, we'll, we'll call it a night at that. I think that's uh, a good place to call it. As my instance has failed, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and so. we we streamed a whole hour longer than Frontier did. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>, <laughs> We're just we're just hardcore fans. See, that's that's what it is. <laughs> There's nothing better to do. That's the problem. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, but considering they ignored me on Twitch and then Mark completely didn't answer my question, I'm going to dig at them every <laughs> chance I can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Oh, we've got a, we've got someone else in the chat. Uh, unfortunately, Ace Ace X Two Nine X, you've just joined, and we we're just packing up. I'm sorry. Is this game good? This game is freaking phenomenal. You should definitely go back and check some of my previous videos. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, look on uh, YouTube and uh, try and avoid anything by that nut job cycle okay? <laughs> yeah, don't don't listen to it. But with that, I, I have to say thank you, Cow, for joining us tonight. It was great to have you on. I think we'll, uh, we'll definitely we'll definitely have you back again at some point. We'll we're, we're trying to rotate it around. We we'll get a few few more faces from the community on, and uh, I think it's always good fun to have other people to uh, to chat to. I think my dog's gonna want to go out now anyway, so I better call it. <laughs> and thank you again, Alien. Always great to have you, uh, you. helping me it's out. It's so. a privilege. Uh, yes, it is indeed an honour and a privilege, sir. <laughs> Well, thank you both for helping out tonight, and uh, we'll see you all again shortly, Commanders. Farewell. <laughs>